Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh fuck, should I put on relaxing Pokemon? Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the stream. Hi, Jillian, Jacqueline, Insomni, offline gang. Hope you're all well. Famous hoodie? So true. I'm kind of in the mood. We'll see. Because this is going to depend on how my lungs are feeling by the end of the... Uh, video section, but I'm, I'm thinking tonight might be a long stream. I don't have really... Did I want... Oh, there's a new Nexpo video? Oh, fuck. Okay, yeah, it, we might be in for a long stream tonight then, boys. Lake City... Oh, it's fucking an hour long! That's doable! Oh, shit. Okay, okay, we might, we might, we might be in for a big one tonight. Uh, no promises, let's, let's just take it a, a section at a time, but... Hour-long Nexpo video? Not only do I have permission to watch those on stream, but it's long and I don't know. I've just wanted a new Nexpo video for a while that I can consume in one sitting. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, tomorrow there should should be the um, Lego Star Wars video, by the way. You guys can find out about it. Uh, I'll tell you guys soon or like early because it's going to be up tomorrow anyways, and you guys are my Twitch chat, so you, you, you know you, know you guys are special. You guys know you're my favorites. You know you're my favorite viewers, right? <laughs> oh, God. Um, but if if the thumbnail gets done in time, I'm having Ari would draw a fucking Lego Anakin and Obi-Wan just blushing about to kiss, because I think that's really funny. I don't know. It, uh, gay ba like Gay thumbnails seem to work really well for me, so... Yo, about to watch the Sonic 2 movie? I need to watch Sonic 1 still, man. Monster porn at prom. Yeah. Alright, so... I feel like the notice have gone out for a decent chunk of people, so I'm gonna say this. I have a bone to pick with Twitch. These guys don't even let you put fuck in a title. Not even censored. They don't put you... They don't let you put fuck censored in the title. And YouTube, my guys... My dudes, I know I shit on the YouTube crowd a lot, but I lay, I, they, YouTube has this over, uh, Twitch in that they let you put, not only do they let you put fuck in the title, but if you censor it, they let you monetize the video. That's not, like, you can't tell me. You can't tell me. Yeah, if anybody asks that, I'm not censoring the word fucker. It's clearly not spelt the same way. It doesn't have the same amount of characters. That is faker. Monster faker dating sim. On YouTube, it's monster fucker dating sim, though. Please don't be clickbait. Please don't be clickbait. This is, unironically, a game I really like. Um, and I, I know it's, I know that sounds sus as fuck from the title, but uh, it's a really charming, well-written game uh, with a great art style called Monster Prom. I've only ever played the first one, and I kind of want to make my way through the sequels um, on stream, so I figured it's a good it's a good foundation to get to introduce you guys to one of my favorite dating sims. Probably the first dating sim I actually unironically played. You have amazing taste? Yeah, it's, it's a bit sad. My profile picture on Discord was Liam for a very long time. Unironically? Yeah, like, I, I really liked it because it's funny as hell. Like, it's just super well written. With porn, right? You gotta go to Rule 34 for that. Who is your bias, actually? I, I, I'm i definitely partial to Damien and Liam. Uh, I don't know if my taste has changed in the, since the last time I played it. It's been like three or four years. But it's it's really good. And it, 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 it's probably going to be an easy thumbnail. Is this going to be a lewd game or just very suggestive? It's suggestive. It's Twitch safe. It has a category. Every character is of legal age, I'll say. It's like, they're monsters, so some of them are like fucking 400. It's just, the prom setting is just tongue-in-cheek. 
Scott is the best boy. I like Scott because he's voiced by Ego Raptor, but he's just not really my type personally. Of course, you're a Damien liker, same. I feel like that's a pretty basic answer though. Like he's focus group tested to be well liked and fuckable. Who are the old white men in the room? This is my uh, cabinet. I'm in the situation room in the Pentagon. What a hoodie count is a monster or does it lie in the furry category? It's neither. I'm a piece of clothing. It's not that complicated. Dude, what is going on? Nothing but productive streams here on the Quite channel. That's not the correct cabinet, though. I I'm sorry, but there's not a whole lot of Nixon-era cabinet pictures that are from a good enough angle to use. I did look, trust me. Like, I, I looked around for one. Like, I if you want to get that fickle, this isn't, this isn't the right inauguration podium, either. And this isn't the right Secret Service car. And this isn't the right press podium. And this is the wrong Oval Office. <laughs> like, none of these are correct, man. Just use your imagination. Who's Damien? I can't wait to show you. <laughs> Go back. I think my favorite part about the car is just the shitty little lines on top of it and the fact that you can still see Trump's hand next to me. It's so dog shit. Explain what's happening today. We're playing... I already explained it. We'll, we'll, we'll just jump into it in a minute here. I want to double... I just want to make sure... What is it? Notice go out. They, sometimes they take a few minutes. The answer we all want to know is there sex or not? Not visual sex, no. There's implied sexual acts, but it's not like in your face. Like I don't have I won't have to censor the fuck out of this like five nights at anime. <laughs> you don't like Liam? I mean, I think he he's got like a he's got a certain charm to him. I don't know. He seems very like he seems like a very like good cuddler. I don't know. Monster Prime, isn't it from 2018? Yeah, it's a, it's an older game. Well, older relatively speaking. By Zoomer standards, it is. Mental sex. So true. All right, I think notice went out. Let me boot up this game. Uh, first launch, so I hope it does not glitch out on me. Let's also hope I remember all the different route paths, because I'm trying to not fumble, my, fumble the bag on this one. Yeah, so there's DLC for this, and there's also Monster Prom 2. So we're just going to start with this and then maybe play one of those another day. Okay, here we are. I may, uh, I might have to fuck with the audio balancing. Let me know how it is as we get into the game. Make your own voices. Uh, we're gonna keep the voice effects because I'm bot playing this shit by myself. Short game. Let's do the full. Let's do the full. Let's get all 60 minutes in. Ah, spooky high school. Not actually high school. These motherfuckers are college aged. The sweetest years of our lives. Back then, we were young and unafraid. Sometimes, sometimes brilliant, sometimes just stupid, but always willing to live life to the fullest. I'ma, I'm I'ma turn this down a slight. Don't care? Then leave. We were on a wild journey to discover who we really were. Oh yeah, every, every, um, character is bi-romanceable, I believe. Uh, I'm gonna be the green guy. I, I'm not, like, I, I feel like this guy is probably a little closer to my, to me. But this dude's green, so I'm kind of obligated to pick him. Yeah. His name's literally Green. All right, let, let, let's play this one straight. I'm not, I'm not a... Well, we're not going to play it straight. We're, we're going to try and romance a dude. That's not a surprise, but... Um, I'm just going to use my normal name. Ah, I'm a fucking piece of clothing. We'll go for that. Yeah. And we had yet to experience its ultimate challenge, the monster prom. I remember it clearly. Six weeks were left, and it, as, I fa as we fantasized about our dream prom dates, we were all scrambling to catch the attention of one of our six most charismatic classmates. Miranda Vanderbilt, 19, a sweet mermaid princess who was cute as she was genocidal. Demian LaVey, a fearless demon with a taste for destruction and a love of fire. I think that that's probably the one we're going for, by the way. Just a heads up. <laughs> and this is the one voiced by Ego Raptor, which makes him, like, automatically second place, at least. He's cheating on Springtrap? I'm playing a fucking video game. God. I can't enjoy myself without you people trying to make it out as if I'm cheating on somebody by playing a dating sim. Scott Howell, a werewolf athlete who compensated for his rather small brain with a stupidly huge heart. 
Liam DeLioncourt. He's 400, by the way. A hipster vampire whose standoffish demeanor hid that he was a truly lovable dork. Yay! Polygeist. I know Ethan likes this one a lot. It's been his profile picture on and off for fucking ages. Party ghost with an insatiable hunger for all what? the wrong things. And um, a mean self-made gorgon with a merciless sense of business. It was clear it had to be one of them. But who? We only had six weeks to choose. And even more daunting, only six weeks to woo them. But as I said, we were young and unafraid and ready to start. I've read this dialogue so many times, man. Welcome to Monster Prom's stupidest pop quiz ever. All minds are rotten, but they are rotten in so many different ways. Worry no more, we're now using our PhD in bullshit to diagnose which kind of deviant sicko you are. You monster fucking fucks. This way, each of you will start by having stats that better reflect your true self. Let's start. Which is the coolest mythological creature? The invisible hand of the free market. I think I, I'm definitely going to lie about these to um, try and optimize my chances of getting either Damien or Liam. That's like just who I classically go after. A sphinx who's super turnt and ready to party and she wraps all the whittles, riddles? This weird creature I drew when I was six and which is clearly super derivative from other mythological creatures, but it's super cool and is my OC. Yeah, that one. Really be picking all the money answers? True. If this was accurate, I'd do all the ones about having lots of money, because I do have that. School is outdated and lame. We need a new school subject ASAP. Turning people into your puppets through emotional warfare. How to correctly punch a crocodile without terrible consequences. Thanks for the sub, Simply ZG. Critical thought. I mean, damn, this country could really use a subject like that in schools. Nerd. What's the sexiest type of knowledge a lover can have? Lyrics. Sports stuff, financial empire, set stuff on fire, how to make a killer cocktail out of anything, obscure 80s movie trivia. I gotta tell you, I really want to do another gag uh, that's hopefully less dangerous, but of similar effects to that one like aerosol flamethrower I did. They'd never try that shit, by the way. I was so dumb for doing that. Like, if the flame had gone too far back, it could have blown up the aerosol canister and like just shot, shot shrapnel in my face. But yeah, setting stuff on fire. See, I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. Um, sure. Okay, I think the meme I need to have here is get boldness to the top. Okay, who, where am I going? Where am I going? I'm pretty sure Damien's a fucking auditor or like a, a gym guy. That day, an epic dodgeball match takes place. Everything seems lost, but you deliver an inspirational speech that fuels your team's spirit, leading to a spectacular comeback. You're clearly a natural-born leader. You gain plus two charm. You're bored and doodling your notebook when Damien suddenly appears. What the fuck is that doodle? Is that me? Also, he makes Shadow the Hedgehog noises every time you see him. It's great. Never thought I'd see you play Monster Prom? This is actually not the first time I've streamed this on Twitch. I think there's like really old clips of me playing with some folks back in the day. Mm -hmm. Am I cuddling shirtless with Liam? Mm -hmm. See, this is not a pairing I personally support. It's me with one or the other. It's it's how it goes. Loser. Dude, if you were looking for a shortcut to the board, this is your lucky day. Give me a good reason not to cuddle your face with my fists. Oh no, they discovered your erotic fan art of them. You can't think of any way to calm down both of them. Also, I think there's a way to narrate the, or to seduce the narrator in a, like in one of the future games. But maybe the right answer can calm one of them down. What is What the fuck is this? This fuckery, dear Damien, is art. I present to you, Yaoi. Hmm. I thought Liam was drooling for a second, but those are just chin lines. Okay, I have to choose wisely here. If I fuck this up, they, they won't hang out with you. Seduce the narrator? I don't think you can in this version. It's like in a different version. It's like in a different thing of the game. Yeah, you need all the DLC and all achievements to date the narrator. Something like that. What the fuck is this? This fuckery. The narrator is low-key kind of hot. I like the way he has a, a hat on. I'm pretty sure it's Yowie. Damien is streaming Quite's new song. So true. Pick the second one. It's definitely Damien's. This is, this is like, the choices that I always fuck up. Like, I don't know which ones I should, I'm meant to, like, are, are closer to their personalities. Like, and I always, like, shit the bed on it. I'm, don't Google it. If we fuck this up, we have to fuck it up authentically. 
this this is like said all professional like so i feel like this would be for liam then you start tickling damien what the fuck stop i will cut you damn not sure if you actually have the balls to face me or if you're just a complete idiot maybe both hmm. And you must admit, the piece is relatively good. Look at it. This one obviously knows how we both look shirtless. It's a bit unsettling, yet a bit flattering, right? Yeah! I wish I was this good of an artist in real life. But you catch Damien, ta Damien taking a glimpse at your masterpiece. You gain plus two boldness and one creativity. That worked for some reason. Um, sure. Okay, I'm sitting at the cool kids table. You know, where the leader of hell and a uh, ruthless businesswoman are hanging out. You find Vera sitting in front of a pile of money instead of food, as usual. Damien comes over and drops his own money pile on the table, and also some organs. Not bad. But I prefer to exert a little less effort for my income. A dejected swamp creature slumps over to the table and adds money to Vera's pile. Income? You mean this stuff? This is just what people throw at me to get me to stop punching them. And this is what people throw at me to keep me from revealing what kind of porn they're into. I don't want to talk about it. I agree, money is secondary. The frowns on their faces are the real reward. Still, I'm always looking to improve efficiency. <laughs> Have you tried developing business contracts in hell? Your victims will be even more terrified if they know death won't save them. That doesn't work on the undead for those who need a priest. A priest? You know how my family feels about priests! I'm sick of terrorizing people one at a time. There's got to be a way to terrorize everybody in the cafeteria at once. And make money at the same time. Bro, they're hustlers? Yeah, they are. And I'm sure there is, that is after all, the essence of capitalism. Set the building on fire and charge an exit fee. Trick everyone into having an orgy, then film it, blackmail in bulk. If we're, if we're going for a specific person here, it's definitely this top one. I'm surprised you didn't think of that, Damien. Damien, where'd he go? Hey, I'm back. I was just setting the building on fire real quick. Did I miss anything? Rest of the plan. There's a plan. Not anymore. Damien, immune to fire as he is, continues doing exactly what he was doing before the fire, beating people up for their money and organs. Um, sure. Why the fuck are we at school until 8 p.m.? This shit sucks. Why they both gotta be hot, ma'am? I mean, you can do multiple runs. I'm just choosing to... Peep, I'm just choosing to, like, go... Uh, like, skip over this one, you know? Hmm, I'm going to... Hang out... At the, uh, outdoors. That day during recess, you start a half-hour rave that goes full crazy. You have an, I, no idea how it escalates so much, but at one point, there are, like, 300 people. Someone summons demons from Nightmare Dimension. The consequences might distort the fabric of reality, but who cares? Plus two fun. As I go about my day, I can't help but notice Damien and Scott trying on beige business suits. By the time you get over to them, they've both taken the suits off and are examining them critically. Look at the casual clothes. He looks good in that flannel, look at him that. Nice and broad. Something still isn't right. Yeah, I really don't want a half-ass or Pokemon's cosplay. Coach says to always use your full ass on everything. I'm with you, man. Nobody gives more of a shit about the classic Pocket Humans video game than me. But what the fuck are we missing, man? We've got the suits, the horn-rimmed glasses, the sickly pale body paint. Everything we need to cosplay Doug and Wilbur. <laughs> are those Dream SMP members? The twin titans of real estate. I know who they are, Scott. I played the game. Now help me think of what we're missing. You know right away what their costumes need. You reach into your bag and pull out the one thing no human would be caught dead without. A unicycle. A gun? Well, I'm coming at this from a distinctly American perspective, so... You know, I, I have a... Also, I need to move my guy so I'm not blocking. I'm sorry, corner text command. You're going to have to go away for this stream, or for this part of the stream. I just don't want to block, uh, what is it? The prompts? But yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a gun. Like, if, if we're being realistic, I have one right here. Like, I don't have a unicycle within reach. I do have a firearm. Fucking metal. Yeah, yes, yes, this is exactly what my costume needed. Come on, Scott, put on your mask and let's head over to the convention. Okay, Damien, 
Hey, by the way, why is the convention happening over at the First National Bank in the middle of the day on a weekday? <laughs> Humans don't ask questions, Scott. Come on, let's go rob that. I mean, make some friends. Bro, put the gun away? Why? It's always here. It's, it's just hanging out. It's just chilling. It's not bothering anyone. Week two, morning. Um, Casually pulls out a Glock. It's actually an M1911. Um, that day you skip class and just hang out in the bathrooms because you respect no authority. Some people just want to watch the world burn. By skipping class and hanging out in the bathrooms, you give zero plus zero shits, but you gain plus two boldness. You're chilling in the bathroom with Damien and Miranda. Thank the gods for co-ed bathrooms. Yeah, I mean, it's really convenient for story purposes. I'll give them that. Everything's going great, and you're obviously very cool until you hear some noises. Also, how's the uh, music to compared to the audio of my voice? Do I need to uh, turn that down or increase my own volume? Even the playable characters are hot? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If um, the character I was playing as right now was romanceable, I'd probably, I'd probably give it a shot. Oh snap, it's Crazy Martin, the werebear janitor. Damn, we're done. If I get caught skipping class again, they're gonna feed me to the school's dragon. Or even worse, they'll make me come in on a Saturday! <gasps> ah, this is bad, and I didn't bring my champion who would fight to the death to defend my honor. What can we do? I'm gonna turn it down a tad. Because we can always boost it in post. It seems they're both waiting for you to do something. I always have to come up with the plans, as the protagonist. It always falls to me. No time to think. I make myself as big as possible. Play dead until he goes away. I think it's probably a make myself big thing. That's how, that's how dogs do it, right? You puff out your cheeks, stuff a bunch of toilet paper in your shirt, and wave your arms in the air. Crazy Martin has no idea what the hell is happening. He thinks he's having a flashback to Nam. He's a war vet? Damien puts a hand on your shoulder. That was stupid as hell, but you sure scared him to death. Stupidity puts plus ravery is my favorite mix. You're rad. Yes, that was superb. For a moment, you scared me too. So convincing. You're my knight in shining armor. Okay, plus two boldness, plus one creativity. Let's go. Um, sure. It's really convenient how they have one free chair here. Oh yeah, apparently a demon hunter goes to the school. Like, they literally let the monster equivalent of a school shooter, whose whole gag is being the monster equivalent of a school shooter, hang out in the halls of the school as a regular cast member. <laughs> you find Scott and Damien immersed in their favorite mobile game, Pokemans Go, based on the classic pocket humans. <laughs> By Reginald Bo Look at his fucking drip, man! He knows how to dress! By Reginald Bossworth. Uses come income to tax on it. Oh no, my Lindsay Roberts never saves receipts. It's super effective. Ha, and now for the finishing blow. Wait, what? Reginald contracted lymphoma? Reginald lymphoma deals 500 physical damage to him and 999 emotional damage to him and his loved ones. Damn. Poor luck on the roll, man. I make them all smoke cigarettes and live next to toxic waste dumps, obviously. Maybe you should stop that. <laughs> What are you two nerds doing? Nerding around? Nerd up, nerds. Whoa, Scott, is that you? We didn't recognize you under all that nerdery. What are you even doing playing a dumb video game for stupid babies? Thanks for the sub, MPP, NPDD leader. But Pokebands isn't dumb. It's cool because, because, no way is Scott going to come up with anything. But if you do, maybe you can score some points with Scott or Damien. Show them what a phone equipped with Pokemon to go can also be used as a football. I, I don't know, this just- I don't really feel like sucking up to these guys. This just feels more in my- in my wheelhouse. Ah, vegetables! We hate those! Stop it! Seriously, pelt us with ground beef or something. Or at least some sausages. That's a little sauce. Or pig's ears. A little fruity. How about some forks and knives? It's fruity despite the fact that we're talking about meat. That is a weird- That is a weird, uh... Kind of... Dichotomy. If someone talks about how much they want to suck dick, you like, or like how much they want to slurp someone's schmeat, you may, you might refer to them as fruity, or as acting fruity. I'm just gonna keep throwing knives. Ah, these knives are almost as bad as the vegetables. Guys, come on, stop throwing carrots and knives at my cousins. Those are your cousins? So 
Sorry to hear that, man. You stop, all right? As soon as the wolf pack have retreated out of range, nice thinking. Finally a use for vegetables, am I right? Damien barely remembers to take the knife out of his hand before high-fiving you. He does, though, so that's a win. I'd say that was a fairly successful, uh, turn of events. Um, sure. <laughs> hmm. I should probably hit up the auditorium. Also, I look sick in my costume, dude. This is what wearing the hoodie when I record videos is like. Uh, actually, it's not like that at all, because I am the hoodie. Got you again. I got you again. That day, while rehearsing for the class play, it's as though the muses themselves have descended to give you a figurative blowjob. Your performance is intense and inspiring. It will be remembered for generations, which is pretty rad by high school play standards. Plus two creativity. You see Damien pacing, stabbing the air with his cardboard lance. He would be a fucking great Skyrim uh, NPC. Dude, I don't do things if I don't look badass doing them. This play is not an exception. I am gonna live so motherfucking truthfully through these imaginary circumstances. This script is just so, I don't know, vague? Why is the Dark Knight so evil? Where does his anger come from? Why all the murder? And yes, when it comes to plays, I want there to be a reason for murder. I mean, wanting good writing in a story you're trying to be a part of isn't that high of a thing to ask for, I think. It, peep, guys, peep the midriff. Peep the midriff. <laughs> I just don't need one in real life. Um, you better give him a reason not to murder you, just in case. Be method. Go on a real life killing spree. I found that always works for me when I need to get in the head of like an international war criminal. Just get on a few lists and you're, you've got all the experience you need for the comedic role. It's not like I really need an excuse to go on a killing spree. But this is as good an excuse as any. Just gotta grab a razor, an iron, a cheese grater, and anything to gag the screaming. Holy shit, that does not bode well. Next week, you find the police knocking at your door. At first, you're afraid Damien frames you for murder, but then it turns out he frames you for murders, plural. Fuck. Screwed the pooch on that one. Um, sure. All right, I gotta, I gotta get my boldness back, I think. That day, you visit the bathroom to take a number two. Don't worry, there won't be an illustration of that specific moment. Also, I've never called this number. I'm not going to, because it doesn't have an area code, but it I'm, I would be funny if it actually was an Easter egg. Thing is, you make one of the boldest decisions of your life. You don't put paper on the toilet seat before using it. Look at you, you crazy bastard. You gain plus two boldness and probably one disease that I can't pronounce. With a slight chance of one STD. That's not how toilets work. You're doing your thing when a wild Damien suddenly appears. Noob. Hey you, you look like you have nothing better to do. Well, I am playing this game. I need a mount for prom because walking is for losers. And also because I lost my driver's license after I drove my motorcycle through another Sunday school picnic. But I won't take a, just any lame mount. I need the best creature in hell. So let's brainstorm. If you don't answer in the next 10 seconds, I'm putting a bit in your mouth and riding you. Why did he have to make that sound appealing? What about the giant gelatinous 50-nosed monster at your house that spits bile and eat corpses? We're talking hell here, so a goat, but not just any goat. A goat that's a real asshole. Oh, thank you for the gift sub, Koneko Okay, Appreciate it. I'm trying to figure out which which would be more up his alley. Because this seems a bit more simplistic, like not so over the top. The giant gelatinous 50-nosed creature at your house that spits bile. If it's at his house, I feel like he's not super enthusiastic about it, because that would have been his go-to if it was. I want to say goat. Damn it! Oh, so because I'm a demon and live it- I'm, I keep, I'm fumbling this bag so hard, dude. I'm screwing my pooch. You have to get, guess which stat applies to what answer and pick the one that correlates to which stat is higher between the two. Oh, okay. See, that- this is where I'm fucking up. Because I'm a demon and I live in hell with my two dads who are also demons, you think I'm into goats? That's fucking offensive. One guy impregnates a goat with a hell spawn once, and now everybody thinks we're all goats down there. Dude, what's wrong with you? You know goats are a sensitive topic for demon. You lose two charm and one fun. Guys, I didn't mean to. I was accidentally racist. Um, sure. Damien has two dads? Yeah, good for him. Alright, let's see if I can't recover from this blunder. You find D Scott and Damien shoveling hot dogs and mashed potatoes into their mouths while Coach cheers them on. Believe in yourself. 
Stop screwing the pooch? Yeah, I'm trying to screw the demon. Go, boys, go. Munch your way to victory. Ah, there is no truer sport than an eating contest. Tenth. Fenth, crotch. Shuzz up and let me eat. It looks like a pretty fair fight so far, but where's the fun in that? Time to step in and tip the balance. Slather Damien. Okay, okay. Back on track. See, I, I, it's been a while since I played, so the stats reminder is helpful. But beyond that, I don't really need any, I don't need any, uh, suggestions. Thank you, though. What the hell? You were planning on setting off those fireworks in here anyway. You let them rip. Hey, 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 stop that! Who did that? Who's making noise? I'm yelling because I'm scared. They found us, Scott. The Viet Cong. Oh lordy, it's Nam all over again. How many war vets work at this school's faculty? Damien lets out a sigh full of equal parts relief and mashed potatoes. Uh, thanks. I was just eating like I normally do when those two idiots came over and turned it into a sport. It's not my fault I eat so fast. I've got a literal furnace in my stomach. Damien lets you have some of his half-chewed hot dogs. Nice. Some would say that's almost like making out with him. Um, sure. Okay, I'm gonna I'm take a risk here and go to... I'm, I'm, I'm a, I think I need some more charm stat. That day during recess, you start a half-hour raid that goes full crazy. You spot Juan, the small, magical Latino cat who seems a bit sad. He explains to you that he's worried people are so used to calling him Juan, the small, magical Latino cat, that now everyone defines him only by his size, magicality, ethnicity, and species. He's more than that. You correct him. You don't see him in such uh, simplistic terms and convenient definitions. It's just that there are around 23 other different Juans in the school, so adding all that to his name is quite necessary. Tell him you'll never forget about him and the crazy adventures you both lived together in Monster Prom's prequel, Monster Middle School. You have a great time remembering those crazy stories. You gain plus two fun. Oh yeah, look, the cat's actually a real character. He's right there. Damien's minding his own business, clotheslining people when a siren goes off. It's the Slayer. She's on the roof of the school holding a megaphone and she's looking right at Damien. Yeah, see what I was talking about? They literally just let a, a, someone trying to murder the school population hang around them like as a normal, a normal student. What's up, ball sack? Put this in your horn and smoke it. Yo mama's so fat, when she possesses someone, they don't need an exorcism. They need liposuction. Oh yeah? Well, well, Damien's stuck. It's up to you to figure out a comeback. You lean over and whisper in his ear. Fuck you, you Van Helsing looking piece of shit. Yo mama's so poor she can't even sell her soul because she's only renting it? Hmm, what, what, what stats do these align with? Did not Awuga the school shooter? I don't think you can, and I wasn't going to try to. She can kill me anytime, hearts. I don't know, man. She's got a total of four teeth. Are you sure you're trying to get in that? Yo, mama, please. I want I want to say that... The renting one? Like, I feel like that goes with creativity pretty well. God fucking damn it, Jillian! I hate you pieces of shit. I hate you. You, you, keep, you keep screwing this up for me. You keep screwing this up for me. What the fuck? Why would you say that about my mom? Are you on the fucking Slayer side? Yo, Slayer, I know I can't kill you because you're the protagonist or whatever, but I'm cool to beat the shit out of your minion over here, yeah? That's not my... I mean, yeah, sure, go for it. Damien jumps up and down on your face while the rest of the school watches, and I lost boldness. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, guys. You're losing mod. You're, you're losing mod. Um, sure. I knew he'd think you were insulting him. I'm so fucking pissed about this. Like, I'm actually so broken up about this. I'm gonna ask him to prom and he's gonna spit in my face. This isn't gonna- it's not gonna work! I can't do a second dating sim run where I get rejected at the end of it, man. Okay. The library. That day, you spend some time in the library's PCs playing some good old online poker. Gambling seems like a stupid and dangerous decision, but who cares? This time it paid off, so fuck it. You get two money. Is it time to give up on Damien? I've got no time to pivot to someone else, man. You're distracted from your work by some very creative swearing. It sounds like Damien. No one else can curse quite so fluently. You greasy mound of possum tits. Why don't you eat your keyboard and shit out of life, loser? 
you can't help going over to investigate. Seems like he's playing that extremely popular and extremely competitive online game, Federation of Fables. What's a what? What's the um? Is that based off World of Warcraft? Uh, no, League of Legends. I'm fucking stupid. Judging by his swearing, he's not doing very well. And judging by the laughter, you know, now that I know he's a League of Legends player, he got like 20% less attractive. I don't. I may, I may have misjudged on this one, guys. Judging by the laughter coming over his voice chat, it doesn't look like his swearing is working either. He looks like he's about to put his fist through the monitor. You've got to help him out. Speak the forbidden name of the faceless goat got into the microphone, driving the opposing team mad. Oh, thank God. Thank God it was bold. I had the right stat. You've been saying this eldritch knowledge for a really special occasion. This seems important enough. You whisper the unholy accretion of syllables in D Damien's microphone, your lips almost touching his. The voice chat erupts into screams as the minds of the opposing team, and most of Damien's, become portals to the faceless goat god's baleful realm. But more importantly, they stop playing. Damien's is able to win the match basically by himself. Good thing demons are immune to the dreadful name, otherwise this would have been a really bad plan. After a brutal last second win, Damien turns to you smiling. Hey, thanks for teaching me that name. I'm going to use it all the time now for almost no reason. Looks like you've released a new and terrible evil into the world. That's every time I upload, man. This is not new. But at least Damien's happy. Plus two smarts and one boldness. Cool. Um, sure. You find Damien and Vera hunched over a scale model of spooky national bank made of milk cartons, lunch trays, and ketchup packets. All right, we'll go in through the side entrance, disable the alarms with an EMP, and blow the safe. <laughs> Why don't we just blow up the side entrance, blow up the alarms, and blow up the safe? Because we only have so much for. It sounds like personal problem. Damien points at a kosher dill pickle in front of the vault labeled Police Ogre. That's the Police Ogre. He's got eyes all the way around his head, never sleeps, and doesn't take bribes, and is invincible in combat? That's so... that's so busted, man. What the hell? Bro gave him three full kits. Can we blow him up? No, we can't blow him up. We need to find a way around him. I'm out of ideas. Quite, we'll cut you in on the heist if you can solve this ogre problem for us. Rob the bank yourself and split the money with Vera? Definitely eat the pickle. I would never do that shit in real life, by the way. Pickles taste like trash. Quick as the flash, you snatch the pickle off the table and bite it in half. Yes! Success! Suck it, ogre! That doesn't actually solve the- Look, Vera! Now the path to the vault is clear! We can blow it open and walk out with the cash. But the ogre is still there. The map doesn't lie, Vera. I see no ogre. Fine, why don't you two just rob the bank then? I'll focus on my illegal drug trade. You're happy to share a romantic heist with Damien. Together, you eat the actual ogre just like you ate the pickle. And everyone knows police og ogres are the ultimate aphrodisiac. Nice. Um, you fucking sure. live, Pickles? I... If you liked Pickles before, I don't know how you can like them still after fucking the the existence of Pickle Rick. Like, that has to have ruined the entire vegetable for anybody who previously liked them. Cannibalism? Are you calling me a pickle? Alright, I'm gonna try the- I'm gonna try this, um... Auditor- wait, well, actually... Maybe I should go for the gym. I need to make up for some lost stats. The day, that day, an epic dodgeball match takes place, but the match isn't as important as the human interactions within it. You're at your peak when you decide to go for the overkill and wink at one of your teammates. He's totally mesmerized. It's the most epic think wink ever. Damn, you know how to win over people's hearts. Plus two charm. After dodgeball comes the obstacle course. You stare across the gym at its terrified as it terrified as are most of your classmates, there are giant centipedes, venomous bears, bloodthirsty mag uh, peas circling just under the ceiling, and animals so bizarre one can barely find words to describe them. Morning, students. His one line of dialogue is good morning, students. Also, Scott has horrible sunburn. Class, I've imported this special course from Regular Creatures High School in New, in New South Wales, Australia. Don't be afraid. I believe in each one, one of you. These terrifying creatures will not break your will. I will not let you down, coach. Giant crocs don't scare me. This is not pee on my pants. <laughs> I'm not personally into him, but you gotta appreciate the face he makes. It's nice. Finally, we're the adversaries. What's that abomination over there even called? That would be a platypus. 
I'm gonna drag it to hell. The underworld has never seen such horror. If it's wearing a hat, it will overthrow the thought like the, the government there in a few days. Well, don't just stand there. Show them what you've got. Clear the course. We've got to go native mates. Oi, hold my beer. Have a look at them. They're so cu cute. Let's say slay them with kindness. I want to say this is probably more my alley. Oh, thank God. The bold stat was correct. Boldness. You grab your trusty bowie knife, slam a six-pack of Fosters, very Australian, and wade into the obstacle course. You dispatch armed platypi, fend off magpies by whipping them with snakes, and punch a koala. If you've ever seen a koala, you know those motherfuckers had it coming, alright? Don't feel bad about it. After winning an arm wrestling match against a drunk crocodile, you instantly become a hero. Whoa, that was awesome. You even made Coach cry. It's tears of joy. The will of youth really did find a way. Damien sees it too. I'm not crying. It's just so much murder. Your glorious slaughter of endangered animals will go down in history. You gain plus two fun and plus one boldness, and a lawsuit from Green Truce. Um, sure. Magpies, magpies, whatever. I guess it wouldn't hurt to... I don't know, I, I feel like maybe I should buy something, but it feels like it would be kind of better to try and get as many... make up for as much lost uh, spaces I have uh, after, like, those consecutive L's. Hmm. Peter would like a word with you? They want a word with most people, all right? Let's do the auditorium. That day, while rehearsing for the class play, you aren't especially good nor inspired. For once, it seems you aren't getting the classic creativity boost from the auditorium. But afterwards, while talking to your classmates, you're having trouble conveying your point in a discussion, so you decide to convey it through music. You start singing, and everyone else joins you in a kick-ass musical number. Yeah, 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 plus two points. Give me my money. You go to the light booth to see Polly and Damien, how Polly and Damien are doing. Her Plague Doctor outfit's good, too. Lame, that's how we're doing. If I'd known they'd stick me up here just because I missed auditions to go to that monster truck rally, I still would have gone to that monster truck rally, but I would have gotten in, like, nine more fights while I was there. Why did I have to be on so many cool drugs during casting? I thought the lights were butterflies, and I just wanted to play with them. Drugs are legal, by the way, in this universe. It's all in the past now. As long as we're here, I guess we better make the best of it. By fucking with Liam. <laughs> but he's so hard to mess with. He's, like, really good at acting. Come on, between the three of us, I'm sure there's something we can do to make him forget his lines. Rewrite the whole play, but just Liam's lines? That seems like a creativity thing. Like, you need to be creative to do that, and I've got a pretty hefty stat on that front. How am I- how do I not have a high enough stat? How do I not have a high enough stat? Hell yeah, vandalism. Everything is going super well until you get your hands on the script and realize you've forgotten how to read? What is this shit, man? Why are you staring at the script upside down like that? Oh my god, this can't read. They can't read. Forget messing with Liam. This is way fucking funnier. Oh, if only you went to a class once in a while instead of constantly trying to bang your classmates. You lose minus three smarts. <sighs> I'm- I'm never gonna- I'm never gonna get laid, man. I'm never gonna get laid. Not even in a video game, dude. I- I- not only does my fake love life- not only does my real life love life fucking suck- just kidding, I have Springtrap- but in the video game, I keep eating shit. You've sat down to eat with Damien and Liam. Oh, it- oh, it's two stats. It can be more than one stat? I didn't know that. To eat with Damien, Liam's just taking pictures of his food. When a leather-clad figure drops from the air vent under your table, it's the Slayer. Lunch time's over, dirtbags. Time to die. This always happens when we sit together. Your death-based rhetoric is offensive. Don't spoil my food pick. Spoil more than your food pick count, Stankula. I'm about to spoil your face. You mean shit in his mouth? Just his, though, right? Both your faces. Fuck. The Slayer is right between the three of you. You can't save Liam and Damien, but if you act face, you might just be able act fast, you might be able to save one of them. You've been waiting for his Normally, when you flip tables, it's out of anger or mischief, but this is about to be the most righteous table flip ever performed. No, my footing! No, my artfully arranged cafeteria food! Yes, fucking up school property. He probably has drawn all of the penises in the bathroom stalls in this school. 
The Slayer ends up pinned under the table, along with Liam. Damien jumps down there and starts punching indiscriminately, not caring who he hits. So, you know, just another day. I've never felt so alive. Offensive. Whatever, let's flip all the rest of the tables in the cafeteria while the flipping's good. You righteously flip every single table in the cafeteria. With each table you flip, you find Damien is flipping a little more. For you. For some reason, I feel like it's giving me all these signs, and they're not. it's not going to go over well. Like, I'm just going to eat shit sure. by the end of it. I'm going to... I'm going to hit the, um... Fuck, I probably should go to school at least once, right? Like, at least once. That day, you listen to your elders and learn valuable lessons. Sometimes, after all the monster nonsense and the dating gimmicks, you forget that attending class is supposed to be the primary activity at this high school. You gain plus two smarts. Partway through class, you break up into groups. You notice Damien by himself, thinking hard. Damien? Thinking hard? In class? You ask him what's up. It's just this stupid writing assignment. I'm supposed to write two pages on a destructive tool that's better than fire. Better than fire? What's better than fire? Fire is my thing. My whole brand. I swear, Miss Demon Slayer's got it in for me. What am I supposed to write about? You never thought you'd see the day when Damien would ask your advice about destructive tools, but you've been preparing nonetheless. You tell him... More fire? Sarcasm? I don't have enough charm for sarcasm. It's gotta be more fire. All I'd like, my, my strengths are in boldness and creativity right now. Maybe fun. I have to play it safe. Of course, more is always better. Like with capitalism. Or Carnage. Car with, with Carnage, I'll say, yeah, because he's one of my favorite comic book characters. Capitalism? Eh. Eh. Jury's out on that one. It seems like the answer to my problems was inside me at all along. Inside me, where I keep all of my fire. In fact, why write a paper when I could set fire to a paper instead? Haha, <laughs> yes. Damien engulfs the entire classroom in flames just like every other week. This time, though, there's more flames. You're not sure whether Mr. Mrs. Demon Slayer will accept this as an answer, but it hardly matters. Her gradebook is already burned to ash. Okay, guys. Okay. Um... Sure. The final day. Dawn of the final day. Funny Majora's Mask noise. I should probably try and get a little more charm in me, I think. That day, an epic dodgeball match takes place. Most people fall during the battle. You can't take any more, so you violently go straight to the other team's leader and start negotiating for a truce. I get an agreement. What an expected twist. Plus 10 righteousness, but this game is so wrong in so many ways that you would be lucky if you could do anything with that. And plus 2 charm. It's later when you're minding your own business, and definitely not doodling pictures of Damien in your notebook. When you see Damien making his way over to you, and at which point you definitely do not need to hide your drawings. Yo, so here's the thing. You know how I think most people are pretty much 100% awful fuckdoors? I actually think you're only 70% awful fuckdoor, tops. In fact, I, I actually think you're kind of rad. I've been meaning to get a new tattoo, which since nothing's as rad as intentionally sticking needles into yourself to create a permanent image on your skin for fucking ever. And I thought maybe we could get matching tattoos if you can come up with something rad for us. OMG, 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 it's your chance to once and for all convince Damien of how awesome you are. Don't fuck this up. It's time to suggest the baddest, raddest, maddest tattoo of all time. A sea cucumber. Ah, oh, fuck. I, I don't, I don't, I, I, I can't figure out which lines up with each stat. Sea cucumber. Don't fuck up. Don't fuck up. Don't fuck it 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 up. Yes. Oh, let's go. Okay. 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 Didn't did, did not screw it just yet. Oh my fuck. That's the most metal thing I've ever heard. Maybe the pentagrams that are pentagrams could be made of pentagrams that are pentagrams, and the fire can be sentient, and the pentagrams can hate their deadbeat uncle. And the guns end up on TV because they won't eat their vegetables. And maybe the pentagram pentagram pentagrams are also ex-convicts. This will be the raddest tattoos ever. Let's go get them right now and have them on both of our bodies together forever. What? You're about to get badass matching tattoos with Damien. This is the raddest, coolest, dopest, most lit thing to ever have happened. And now you'll be tied together for eternity. Okay, plus two boldness, plus one charm. Um, sure. Okay, back to the... Oh, it's Godzilla. The Godzilla is the chef. I didn't even realize. 
We sit down to enjoy a nice normal meal at the Spooky High Cafeteria as usual. Lil JK, something fucked up is always going on here and today is no different. Hi Quite, did you want to come sit with us and our imaginary friend? No one else is here. Your imaginary friend roars and the whole cafeteria shakes. Okay Quite, you have some smarts. Um, beg to disagree. You're probably going to figure this out pretty quickly. Why do we have a wild beast under our table? Why don't you take a guess? He's asking you to guess because we totally forgot our plan. Scott, no we didn't. Shut up. We were going to teach at the piano, or maybe the saxophone? I lost my notes. No worries, no notes needed. You know exactly what they should do with this wild beast. It's obvious you brought such a beast to the kitchen to turn it into the next Monster Chef champion. Duh. What a kick-ass idea, which was obviously ours. You're right, that was our idea. Hooray, we're geniuses, and I have just what we need. Training montage music. Suddenly you start a training montage with the three of you trying to cook the wild beast. You suck at it since you're not big chefs yourself, and also because it's a wild beast and it keeps on devouring people and wreaking havoc. But it is quite an epic training montage. Afterwards, you're all stu uh, sitting excited in front of a portable TV. The Monster Chef show is about to start. You're holding cute, supportive signs, and you even got yourself a custom-made t-shirt of the wild beast. Whoa, this is the big day. Also, how is it that we trained the wild beast, and now on the show if it's still at noon, in the cafeteria time when it's ended? When it hasn't even ended. I completely misread that. Scott, time works in mysterious ways when it comes to training montages. Realest shit I've ever heard. Okay, boys, I only hope it isn't a souffle challenge. We know the Wild Beast isn't good at souffles. The Wild Beast isn't good at anything aside from devouring people and wreaking havoc. You quietly watch the show. The challenge is Beef Wellington. Fuck yeah, no souffle. Not so surprisingly, once the challenge begins, the Wild Beast starts to devour the other contestants and destroys the show set. You see the judges screaming, who the fuck let a wild, a wild beast enter the competition? The wild beast is disqualified. Damn it, we lost. The prize of laughing at a wild beast fucking up everything on the Monster Chef set, which is a memory we will cherish forever. Is Damien ready to cherish memories that include you? Wowie. Um, sure. That day during recess, you start a half-hour rave that goes full crazy. You're talking to Juan, the small, magical Latino cat, when he tells you that you you won't ever be as fun as Bob the Scary Clown? Right after I gave him a bunch of affirmations that he was totally worth something? Prick. You accept the challenge, you go straight to Bob, stab him several times, open his bleeding chest, and eat some of his guts in order to consume his fun. Really? Do you think that's how this works? Well, it is. You gain plus two fun from poor Bob. Well, it actually was good advice from where I could get that stuff, you know? You notice Damien Miranda squatting on the grass, poking something with a stick. You rush over, hoping for a dead possum, but instead you find them gathered around an entire tiny metropolis. Fucking metal. Check this shit out. It's our kingdom. I call it Smalltopia. The name sucks. A tiny voice from the city shouts up at you, It's called West Pemberley, and we're not a monarchy. <laughs> I was just gonna burn it all with a magnifying glass, but I'm happy Miranda stopped me. It's good to be king. The tiny voice from the city says, we vote for our leaders in biannual elections. But we are facing a quandary, how to boost our kingdom's struggling economy. The whole place has been facing an economic recession ever since a pigeon stole the hospital to build its nest. The tiny voice says, that red guy stole the hospital and lied about it. Yeah, no free healthcare for those guys either, huh? Hey, how about a royal advisor that pays shit, but you can take whatever buildings you want? Hey, says the tiny voice. You know what always boosts an economy? War. I think an anthill over by the water fountain. Rip. Damn it! Damn it! God fucking damn it! I can't, I can't, I can't bear it. I can't bear it. I can't bear it. I can't bear it. I can't even read the dialogue. Just fucking show me my- <sighs> I fucked it. I fucked it. I fucked it. I fucked it. I fucked it, didn't I? I fucked it, didn't I? Just rip the band-aid off. Just rip the band-aid um, off, huh? Sure. You finally pluck up your courage and ask your beloved to go to the monster prom with you. Prom? With you? What a noob. I'd have more fun setting ants on fire, which is what I'll actually be doing on prom night. Setting ants on fire is bad. Now get out of my sight. You fucking suck. <laughs> It was because I lost my boldness stat in the last one, man. I fucked it. 
I fucked it. I fucked it up. <sighs> no monster fucking for today, guys. God fucking damn it. I'm not crying. You're crying. <sighs> what a loser. After that, you were first to abandon your home and join the underground society of sad people who couldn't get a date for monster prom. Which is a fancy way of saying you have to live the rest of your life in the fucking sewers. Gross. <laughs> I never win, man. I never get what I want. I never get what I want. Why is my life so hard? I just joined to see ant people and you crying. Yeah, I'm, I am crying. Yeah, I'm skipping all this. This is just like dry. This is like put sticking your thumb into the bullet wound, man. Just fucked up. Also, this. Also, these slice of life pictures are cool. I like them. It's Dream! And Slender Man in the bottom. I fuck with that. Love the pictures. Yeah, I've always liked the art style. I followed the artist who did all like the character designs on Twitter because their shit's great, just in general. Fifteen minutes by Mike Kroll. You can't win. Stage prop, fifteen dollars. It's a really pretty high quality stage prop. Furry, 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 furry. Okay, how do I skip the rest of the credits? Because there's like a, a post-credits thing, I'm pretty sure. Look, an ambiguous game console controller. Thanks for playing? Yeah. You're not welcome, because that shit hurt me. Unlocked. You have unlocked four new images in the gallery? Yeah, I think I'm just going to cry myself to sleep. Um, this is not the end of Monster Prom on the channel. I refuse to give up, but I am giving up for the stream. And if you watched on YouTube, did you know you missed out on the live drama of me just completely fucking every myself at every turn? You could have been here for that. It was miserable for me, but I'm sure it was fun to watch live. Um, yeah, I need, I need to schedule a appointment with my therapist over this. Okay, okay. That's the end of the Monster Prom section for the stream. Oh, fuck. Dude, we are... Nexpo dropped a big one tonight. We saw it live, LMAO. Yeah, kind of an L for people who didn't. Nexpo time? You're goddamn right. Uh, so if you guys don't know, Nexpo, friend of the channel, recently dropped a uh, hour-long video. And I, any time he drops one, I drop everything I'm doing to watch it. Uh, but before we get into that, I'm gonna run a quick ad break. Wait, more stuff? Yeah, like the stream's not over, just the part that gets turned into a video. Anyways, I'm gonna run an ad break, uh, get some water, use the bathroom, get situated, and then we're gonna get into the meat of this.
Oh boy. For anybody who's coming to the stream for the first time and only was really curious about Monster Prom, I would implore you to stick around for this part of the stream because this is like where we really get into the nitty gritty where we just kind of have a good time. Uh, it's very conversational. We get to watch spooky things together. We, we usually end up watching a lot of horror series and this isn't a series, but if you are unfamiliar with Nexpo, um, he's a very fucking uh, great, he's a really good content creator and he covers a lot of different uh, phenomena on the internet and real life that are like all horror and disturbing content centric. Okay, let, let's, let's jump in. Oh yeah, uh, warning. The following video contains discussion about sensitive events, including child abuse, war, and violence. This video is called Lake City Quiet Pills, an Internet Mystery. Highly recommend. Highly recommend this channel. This video also contains flashing images. December 2007, a Reddit account was created. Like, just one. Just, just one. His real name was Milo, and he was caught up in a myriad of taboo online activity. Hell. Upon like checking going out his on DeviantArt. post history, we'll notice that he talked about his past life in various wars, discussed information technology, and constantly berated spammers that plagued the subreddit he moderated r slash jailbait oh fuck that is a fucking shit ass opening man man his voice it's really nice it, it, it's good on the ears it's easy on the ears <sighs> if you if you is it too loud is it uh, that would be for you guys to tell me but if you're unfamiliar with jailbait that it, it's i did not think that's where this was going but it's essentially a subreddit that is now banned, fucking thankfully, where people would post pictures of minors who they thought were attractive and looked like adults. It was fucking gross. You see, Milo isn't a very good person. At least, considering what we know through his online footprint. r slash jailbait, for those unaware was a subreddit focused on sharing technically clothed but compromising images of underage girls. <coughs> it was a cesspool. Yep. I'm sure you can gauge the community that festered there. Despite this, the subreddit had a thriving user base of thousands, and <sighs> alongside its creator- 5,000 potential felons. <laughs> ...who would later be exposed on national television. The Legend of Peace relatively coasted under the radar through most of its major controversy. Nasty, real. That's just disgusting. I, the red and black text in the immediate base made me think the Batman theme was about to play for a second. Bum, 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 bum. Why are we watching this again? Because I like Nexpo's videos a lot. He always covers interesting subject matter and I get a lot out of them. From Nexpo, with love. Something in my ass! Alright, I'm gonna let him do the talking, because my voice hurts. During their time on Reddit, the Legend of Peace was known to be highly active. With consistent activity throughout his days, it seemed to be an outlet forum in which he'd unapologetically share his political beliefs and opinions. For instance, I'm not pausing. I'm not pausing these to read these. Stations like Fox News and CNN, and regularly lashed out to anyone who gave technical advice that he didn't agree with. Anyone who listens to a fool like you deserves their failure. You posted the wrong forum, fuckwad. He is. This was all in 2008, man. This guy was using that terminology back to then. Those that interacted with him, he was known to utilize relatively vulgar language. Is Nexpo okay with this? Yes. With phrases like. You get the fuck off. And the classic. Fuck off and die. Fuck off and die. 
classic. I'm sure you get the picture as to what type of person religion and peace or Milo was. You paused it. I mean, I am known for being a liar. He was abrasive and caught up in a myriad of questionable activity. Alongside this, though, religion and peace harbored a pretty extensive military background through his self-proclaimed stints in the Cold War, being stationed in Palestine from 1946 to 1949, and astonishingly, even the Battle of Normandy. I believe him. I think he's telling the truth. Now, of course, this could easily be the work of a troll or someone role-playing for attention. Nobody would lie on the Milo internet. Don't say that. justified his war knowledge with claims that he was born in 1930 and enlisted at the early age of 13. In fact, he claimed that he was age 79 constantly, which is pretty damn impressive considering how active and conversational he was just about every day. I mean, I can believe that an old fuck would be on the internet. God knows there's some, you know, elderly people playing Skyrim and Battlefield out there. Not, not, not that they're the same as this guy. This guy's weird. But, I don't know. He seems... Well, not much else to do in retirement, is there? The role that I've personally met doesn't exactly care about what's happening online. And especially not on a barely four-year-old website like Reddit was back then. Regardless, no one really questioned it. If anything... People were interested in his background, and he was always willing to share it. Of course, always with a healthy dose of banter mixed in. Rocking chairs are cool. I wish Herman Miller would make one. On the 18th of May, 2009, at around 2.22 p.m. Can you hear him now? I boosted the audio. The scope of the Religion of Peace account would change. A post was made in the r slash reddit.com subreddit with a simple title. I got tired of using commercial image hosts. I set up my own. You can use it if you want. Also, yeah, subtitles at the top, so you should be able to read them and whatnot. With the link to a website called lakecityquietpills.com. Upon heading to lakecityquietpills.com, you'd be met with a simple web page with a title that seemingly has nothing to do with the URL at all. That old guy's image host is what you'd expect. And given Milo's activity from Reddit, I'm sure you can gauge the type of content he wanted here. Oh no. Upon exploring the website, we can observe how archaic everything is. The About Us section explains the website's convenience. The Terms of Service lays down the rules. The public gallery showcases a random assortment of images. Print the cabbage. Report Abuse page gives a basic plain text form. And the random image link, of course, generates a random image. Aside from the web address, that old guy's image host seemed to be nothing more than an obscure, taboo image hosting website that Milo, an already questionable individual, was trying to get off the ground. This is where our story this would startup? and should end. However, on the 16th of July, 2009, Milo, in a random response comment on a completely random post about Navy SEALs, would effectively plant the seed to a mystery. LOL. I always get a laugh when I read articles demonstrating such naivety. Of course there are assassinations. There are some things that the legal system can fix. I'm awaiting the massive flood of downvotes without surprise. So many people actually believe that as fucked up as things are right now, and as they have been for the last 20 years, that they are needed. What do you want to bet that Bernie Madoff follows Ken Lay's path? I can think of any number of criminal organizations that would benefit from a dose of Lake City Quiet Pills. Next post edits are so good. Yeah, his presentation is like through the roof. It, 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 I feel like if you gave this guy a limited run Netflix series or whatnot, you wouldn't be able to distinguish it from a lot of the content that's currently up there. And his level of internet investigation is super uh, thorough. Thank you for the sub, Tyke. I hope I said that right. Clearly alluding to homicide. Why was a mere archaic image board given a URL with the same phrase? It seems oddly specific, and what most were unaware of back then was that this simple phrase, Lake City Quiet Pills, would serve as a trailhead LCQP. for one of the most intriguing unsolved internet mysteries of all time. This is not Monster Prom. Yeah, we, we finished the Monster Prom run, and I lost uh, both my heart and the game. Guys, it's like my music video for the song that I can't say on Twitch that you can stream by using exclamation mark new song. Congratulations, you won. Congratulations, congratulations, you won. 
Philo kept at his antics, regularly discussing his war stories and demeaning the naysayers. He was true to form. In one of his comments, he outlines his retirement from the armed forces in 1987 and explains how he's happy that he found a job that, quote, doesn't require much physical effort and worked for me. Happily, it's a computer-related field. His verbiage made it seem that he was still employed at 79 years old, which, while not impossible, is definitely extraordinary. I forgot to change the stream title from Monster Fucker Dating Sim, sorry guys. As a matter of fact, being a person of extraordinary circumstances was probably the best way you could describe Religion of Peace, as he was doing and had done things that were wildly out of the realm of normality for those his age. Yeah, like Even using Reddit? Adolescence. He was a person who not only enlisted into the armed forces at the age of 14. Yeah, monster faker, you're right, my bad. But was I, I misspoke there, that was a miss, that was a slip of the tongue. Also present during a multitude of monumental historical events, reformed into an ongoing highly technical career in computer science at age 57, is somehow extremely invested in conversing on Reddit at the age of 79, and is completely open about discussing some of what should be some of the darkest times in his life. Now, with this precedent under our belts, we understand where the idea of Lake City Quiet Pill stems from. The life of religion of peace. Damn 14. What? Yeah, I mean, I'm almost certain that this guy is lying, but there were folks um, in during World War II times who would lie about their age in the draft. And so there were like a few people under the, that 16-year-old age um, that were fighting overseas, like 14-year-olds who lied. So there were, it, it's not like it never happened, but I, I don't think this guy was one of them. It wasn't just a one arc story. He was versed in a field that made sense considering his current circumstances. And given the fact that he was a moderator for a highly taboo subreddit, the existence of that old guy's image host was one of the few things that actually made sense in the realm of Milo's life. I mean, if we back up and look at it, LakeCityQuietPills.com is just a simple, bare-bones website, after all. As summer of 2009 approached, Milo would regularly promote Lake City Quiet Pills in his day-to-day -day activity. Oh, that, I like that transition, right. like, how it, like, specular fades, or, like, regularly luminar fades, like, fades out into the sun, that's cool. Lake City Quiet Pills in his day-to-day -day activity. I like that a lot, I like that transition. Tired of imager? Boom, he's got you covered. Hate making accounts? Milo's got a site for that. He approached his website promotion with the real boots on the ground methodology, and as you'd expect, this was only marginally effective. Despite this, the website garnered most of its attention on r slash Bay, much to the credit of his constant self-promotion, and by July of 2009, it had successfully like garnered music. a whopping 2,254 images under its belt. Expectedly, it was mostly yeah. But, I'm sure that's what he hoped for anyway. And so, with effectively no one batting an eye at the peculiarity of the URL, the website slowly began to take off. And Milo is living large. Wait, I gotta, I gotta back that up, I spaced. The website slowly began to take off. And Milo is living large. How did Nexpo get in the back of this guy's car? How did he find the guy and the car? That's nuts. Oh, these are the section transitions. That's section transitions. That's neat. At around 1 a.m. Central Time on July 17th of 2009, Religion of Peace would make a comment. Who is this guy? This is Nexpo. Uh, he's like kind of a documentarian type creator. Uh, and I really enjoy his stuff. Highly recommend. He's got a very bingeable catalog if you're into this kind of thing. I reported a couple hundred obvious bullshit reddits. Shit for roofers. When did he say this takes place? This guy made his account first in 2007-2008. Um, so this is like a little over a decade ago is when at least where we are in the timeline as of now. Lawyers, local businesses, and shit like that. Just those one-offs that spammers make, thinking that we actually look at their postings. They're all still there. I'm getting very discouraged, even after trading messages with admins about the spam situation. I don't think they really care all that much, like this daily lawyer attorney spam. I downmod and report every day, and the next morning there's another round from the same spammers. 
the admins need some aggressive mods to ban domains and user accounts. It's getting really out of control. At first, this comment seems pretty uneventful. Milo is, once again, complaining about spammers, something he did consistently for years. The thing is, this comment was the last that he would ever make. And from this point forward, religion of peace... <laughs> Can you imagine if he just became the Batman of Reddit? He's like, I can't do it from... I can't use my uh, like immense influence to make this happen. I have to take the streets and beat the fuck out of these spam bots. As we know him, would vanish. In the hours that followed, no one really noticed that Milo was gone. His last post was in the late hours of the night. Yeah, his voice is great for this kind of narration. Interact with him, likely assume that he was asleep. Like, I think I have a, like a, as far as voices for commentating in camera goes, I feel like I have an all right one, but I don't know that I have the kind of delivery you'd need for a really horror centric thing like this. At least not in the particular mood that this guy goes for. At around 1 p.m., an account is made. And just 50 minutes later, they'd make their first post. The end of Religion of Peace. He died today. Milo died today. He was 79 years old. He died at his desk looking at your site. Milo was a mean old fucker. Mean and honorary. He hooked me up with my first gig when I got out of the army. I, l I love how he fight. censors fucker. By making it quieter, but you can still hear him say fucker. Mean and honorary. He hooked me up with my first gig when I got out of the army. I didn't like finding him like that. Milo don't have any living relatives and no real friends. And other than his landlady and a few people where he worked, he didn't talk to anyone about much of anything. Me, he just tolerated. As I said, he was mean. I you have a voice good for what you do. And, and that's the thing. Like, it's not just having the voice. It's having trained up a specific kind of speech uh, to be decent at that. Like I, I've been doing the, like the kind of videos I make for upwards of five, six years now. So I've kind of honed the way I speak um, to what it is today. Like if you go back to even my videos in 2019, the way I delivered, I think is just fucking completely inferior compared to my stuff from this year, last year, even 2020, you can tell that I was slowly transitioning from this weird Yelpy shit not that that was like necessarily bad, but that was just kind of, it was definitely more shrill. And I think it wasn't always as good for delivery of jokes. Um, I, I don't know. I think I just have better commenta commentary now as I've done it more. You know what I'm he saying? Use that as a shield to keep people away from him. Milo thought gone was some kind of con game thought up by some lazy sons of bitches who didn't want to work every day. So he's going in the fire on Monday without a service, just like he wanted. Bruh. I'm planning to dump his ashes in the woods near where he was born. Can't put them right there because there's a mall there now. I thought and the Yelpy shit was really funny. I think it was pretty uh, true to who I was at the time or like what, what I kind of acted like, but I don't know. I, I think the, you know, the deep voiced really, really, I, I had a second puberty me is, uh, is, um, is superior. Girl next door is raggedy old cat to most of his books. His computer's and tronic shitty tag for the disabled vets in the VVA. All the rest of the stuff is for the Salvation Army. All those years and everything he owned fits in the trunk of my car. I don't know what else to say. <sighs> I'll miss him. Miserable bastard. I hated that guy. I'm glad he's dead, but I'll miss him. Editors replying in support. Deep voice, okay, quiet. I mean, in relatively speaking, yeah. My voice now in videos is objectively deeper than it used to be. What, like, what, how else am I supposed to describe that? You want me to just like count the exact amount of octaves and then like give you the analytical version? Fucking the few naysayers. I'm sorry, this all seems so fake. Are you guys genuinely believing this? Edit. Wow, for such a skeptical site, you guys are swallowing this hook, line, and seeker. What a convenient story. Died looking at Reddit. Died making posts keeping people out of spam. And what a nice boss to make a post about him. You guys ought to know a hoax. 
to which Two Six responds, You are an ass. Milo is my friend and I was taking him to dinner on Friday. He worked at home most days. I guess I ought to call his manager, so thanks for that. I don't know why he liked this stuff. Chat confused by a man's voice dropping with age. Yeah, your voice typically will get deeper until you're like mid-twenties as a dude. So, I don't know. This could be my peak, it might not be, but... Your your voice will still like lower in, in octaves as you get older, man, past puberty. It doesn't just top out as you graduate high school. <laughs> And even then, Despite like the, the way skeptics. beyond that, the way you speak will change. Like as you just kind of get new lingo. Like I, 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 my the way my patterns of speech are definitely different than they were in 2019 as well. Two six would return to Reddit two days later to address the overwhelming response his post received and to share where Milo's ashes were spread. Goddamn! How what? old am I? As of last week, I am 22. <laughs> I didn't know so many people could like him that didn't sling a gun with him. Thank you. So I'm out of here now. I don't do this stuff like you and Milo. Take care. Keep the faith. To casual bystanders, this concluded their investment into this online saga. Before they went back to their the day jobs. Peace was pushing 80, after all. And a sudden death due to old age wasn't exactly Oops. a big surprise. And so, there we have it. A story about a borderline illegal subreddit moderator who talked about war stories and lashed out to whoever he wanted to, eventually passing away forever leaving his account embedded into internet history. The Cake end. day. Not, not, nice try, Nexpo. There's 20 more, there's 10 more minutes in this segment. I know you're, I know you're doing a gag. I caught you. I don't use Pinterest, so does my opinion matter? See, the thing is, I've used Pinterest for things, so I was essentially just calling myself out for my opinion not mattering. To some, though, things weren't feeling right. It was too sudden, too convenient for a highly taboo subreddit moderator to just vanish, followed by a completely random account with a strangely specific name to swiftly announce his death before disappearing too. Bruh. Given his online activity, it just seemed like too easy of an out. And across Reddit, there were a few that took notice of this. I love your songs, thanks. So they began to dig. Where have I seen 2-6 before? It was known that he had a very specific style of grammar and was, in some capacity, close to religion of peace. 2-6 isn't exactly the most common choice for a username either, so they had that going for them. Eventually they found their way to an account made in 2001 on a news aggregation website named Fark.com. Fark. And within Sounds it, like user 11057 like was found to be the profile of an angel, Angel26. The account was created in October. Watched this earlier today. Oh, yeah, yeah. Of that year, and the I, me, me and my friends will oftentimes hop in a call when a new Nexpo video comes out. But I've kind of taken to saving these for streams as we fall out of that habit on our own. Email address attached to it was found to be angel.2.6 at lakecityquietpills.com. Also, upon scrolling down to their bio, it read. Dispensing Lake City quiet pills to lousy bastards in need of permanent rest since 1968. What show is this? This no. is uh, the YouTuber Nexpo. He is a great creator. Um, he uploads it not on a set schedule, but when he does, it's like they're big pieces. This is undoubtedly a connection to what we would come to know as that old guy's image host eight years later. But why the hell was it left on an account from 2001? Eventually, Angel26 was found in the comments section about various articles centering on 9-11, since this was a little over a month after this tragedy happened. Interestingly, the typos and grammatical errors found from the Reddit 26 are non-existent, giving rise to the tenuous possibility that perhaps these two 26s two two sixes people. <laughs> Numerous posts on various platforms gave results for an Angel26. On ZBrush.com, they gave praise to the community for being so welcoming in 2001. On Yahoo Answers, 
They responded to questions about cleaning World War II bayonets and painting a patio around 2008. And on a website named Jaguar PC, they could be seen talking about spam filtering, a topic that undoubtedly sounds familiar. Clearly, they had a tenured history in various corners of the internet, and those reading into this began to take notice. There was a lingering sentiment that something was off with these mysterious usernames, though. Things weren't exactly adding up. And there had to be more to this. The URL of the page you're currently viewing is the following. LakeCityQuietPills.com right, slash photo slash multi-host slash index dot php. This is what you get when you click home. Curiously, if you head to LakeCityQuietPills.com without any of the subdirectories, you're merely met with a blank page. This stood out. Typically, something as simple as an image host would have some information here. A redirect, a 404, something. But there wasn't. In response, investigators viewed the page source to see what's up, and after scrolling to the end, they were met with this. Job postings, acronyms, and verbiage that seem to be hidden from is the public eye. Is verbiage a word? I, thought, I always thought it was verbiage. Shade is maintaining the calendar and access to the file dump. Angel has the job posting. <laughs> you messed up, subtitler. The calendar and access to the file. You forgot to put a space here. Way to screw that one up, man. This is uh, this blunder is unacceptable. Good job, man. You ex you forgot one space in an hour long video. Embarrassing. Well done. Angel has the job postings for EU and Asia. We aren't sending anyone to ME. No one. Don't ask for listings. Immediate need: twelve SA Spanish speaking. No papers required. No records kept. Four week paid sequester if refused. Four Italian slash Spanish speakers. No Euro W slash W. Must be bondable. Four for 24 7 DP. Four week gig. English speaking. Spanish and Portuguese fluency a plus. You get the idea. It seemed that there was some sort of undercover operation going on, and with acronyms like W slash W alluding to phrases like wet work or once in warrants, among a myriad of others, the potential for nefarious activity was clear. Back on Reddit, people began discussing this bizarre discovery. Milo was long gone, however suspicion was mounting on whether he was part of some undercover contract for hire assassination ring. <laughs> Onlookers began picking apart the name Lake City Quiet Pills as it was always a strange choice for something as simple as a porn movie image host. The term Quiet Pills, especially considering its context in Angel 26's FARC bio, really made it appear that it wasn't about pills at all. Yeah, I Rather, couldn't have guessed it. Seemed to be bullets. Lake City Quiet Pills have been alluding to bullets. Nice. Further supporting this is the fact that in Lake City, Missouri, a Remington Arms ammunition plant has been in operation since 1941, dispensing around 1.5 Oh, I billion get it. Quiet Pills. They're loud for a second, but then they make who they hit quiet forever. Rounds per year. Is this the newest video from him? Yeah, this came out today so of alleged military background it was safe to assume that this is how we coined this mysterious phrase as investigators dug back further they found an h it'd be funny like if somebody had, was intentionally like making a internet not an internet hoax but like an internet mystery to uh, in like trying to make it as convincing as possible so it didn't look like an ARG, just looked like something authentic that people don't look into until 10 years later and they get one of these videos made on them and they're like, yeah, I did that shit. I did that shit on purpose. HTML message dated the same day as Milo's supposed passing. It's Edmund. getting late for me? I mean, yeah, that's why you watch them at this hour. The following. I'm sorry to tell you that old Milo died yesterday. He went quiet and calm. Not like we all figured. I gave that fat mangy cat of his to the little girl next door. No services or nothing. You know Milo. I'm taking his ashes back to where his farm was. Close to it anyway. There's a mall where his place was. So hoist a few for the old man. Remember what he said. Keep with the man who's got your back. A 
another notable message was made in November. In this one, 2-6 explains how they're gonna cash out with Milo's will. Milo's will cleared probate. Surprise, Milo was loaded. Email Shade if we sent you out in 2005 to 2009. Shade will have checks cut for you. Amount is by how many times, not pay total. Small share is 3 to 4k. Damn. And just two months later, another. Happy New Year, everyone. You can't get We're the full experience of your being spoofed because your sister has the lights on. Yeah, I have to have my ring light just blaring into my face so the tracking on the VTuber model works well, so I'm kind of in the same boat. A party for the old man on the 19th. Party starts at 1500 at the usual. Send your RSVP to Shade. FYI, we're booking a room for three days for anyone coming from out of town and overnight for locals. Come hoist one for Dutch Milo. Now, at first, you might assume that this is but an innocent remembrance party for their late friend. Nah, it's definitely some kind of code. It seemed a bit weird to promote it on what seemed like a hidden job board, but hey, to each their own. I didn't know this was supposed to be scary. Not necessarily scary. But it is a, it's got like an Easter, an air of mystery to it. It's like, un, I would say it's more unsettling than outright horror. January 18th, 2010. We Feature got 38 rooms in the Marriott on 46th. Shade as the key card for locals. Pick up at the party. Give your travel name to the desk and that's it. No ID needed since we're covering the bill. Keep the room service under 500, okay? The phones there are not secure. Bus from the hotel leaves at 13.30. Car service vouchers for return trip when you're ready to crash. Don't DUI. Now, it was here when people began to realize that this party might not have been what it claimed to be at all. There was a reason they were worried about the phone lines. Using fake names, you get the idea. Yep. Something else was going down, and it sure as hell didn't seem to be a celebration. Ominously, on January 19th, the very same day and around the same time that this party was supposed to happen, a sudden high-profile assassination would send a shockwave across the world, skyrocketing the Lake City Quiet Pills mystery into the stratosphere. What previously appeared to be a fringe, bizarre internet mystery began to have real-world connections, leading onlookers to theorize that the hidden job board was much more serious and deadly. It, guys, this is just like Jackbox mystery murder party. <laughs> he assumed. After the stream, I'm going to subscribe to him. Heavily recommend his back catalog. It's very good. Check out next boat. At 3 p.m. local time in Dubai, an Hamas arms dealer named Mahmoud Al Mabou was traveling alone under a fake name. Earlier the same day, he had crossed paths with a group of people also traveling with fake names. However, he was unsure of who exactly these people were. At 3.25 p.m., he arrives to check in. He requests a room with no Yo, balcony and sealed Yo, thank you for the five gift subs, MPDD. Appreciate it. ...to ensure that the only way in was the front door. At 3.51, the assassination team arrives and reserves the room across the hall. At 4.25, Mabu leaves to go shopping. Meanwhile, the team breaks in and lies in wait. 8.24. Mabu returns to this his This is hotel like the room. kind of thing with getting into business like that, just shady arms dealing shit. Obviously, you know, it's illegal and you'll go to jail if you get caught. Um, but another thing is, I would if you, if you were in that business, you would never not be paranoid. I'm a fucking YouTuber and I'm already paranoid. Like, I can't imagine being in this line of business and not shitting my pants every time I wake up. Is immediately like, just breathe a deep sigh of relief every time you're still in your bed when you, like, like get up from, like, sleeping. ...injected with a paralytic muscle relaxant and is killed by suffocation. His body was discovered the next day after room service discovered his door was locked from the inside. For ten days, they believed it was a natural death. At least, until they saw that footage. And thereafter... His murder would stand as one of the most perplexing cases that Dubai police have ever faced. Now, this is a highly abbreviated summary of the events that transpired that day. However, you'll understand why later on. The 
reason I wanted to bring this up was because it led people to theorize that the names behind Lake City Quiet Pills were involved. Although, to date, none of this has ever been confirmed. Yeah, it feels like the timing is highly coincidental, but, you know, the specifics, like, if they, if some cipher breaker was able to kind of connect things that happened in the event towards terminology being used in the site, that would be interesting to hear about. Confirmed. About two weeks after this, the Lake City website would update once more. February 2nd, 2010, party bills. Here's the final for the party. Hotel rooms, 48,341. Limo, 6,080. Bus, 569. Bar bill, 18,890. Christ, those motherfuckers were drinking! Food, 8,030. Dancers, 8,300. Miscellaneous tips, 850. Miscellaneous expenses, 2,840. And medical supplies, 180. Fat Tommy and Stu were okay too. Total bill, 94,080. This video is so well researched, OMG. Yeah, all this stuff is, man. Proud. Thanks. What's the channel called? Next monumental bill. Price for this I'll drop his link a few times uh, throughout as we watch this video. Trip. Combined with the events that took place during the assassination, Investigators began to run with the possibility of these guys being undercover hitmen. More and more eyes began to pour onto LakeCityQuietPills.com over the next few months, and resultingly, subsequent source code messages were encrypted. Ooh, so when they were they're definitely hiding them, some. They were encrypted again and again until they abandoned this method of communication entirely. To date, this code has never been cracked and remains online through the internet way back machine. The alias is never returned, and nothing more, ever, came from this. Skyrim? Well, what a hell of a ride. Wait, I got one? Taboo subreddit moderator nice. gets caught up in some sketchy business, promotes a strange website, and completely uh, this is like I'm glad Nexpo's giving us this because a lot of uh, three hour long movies don't even give you an intermission for bathroom break in the middle of his hour long video Nexpo's nice enough to give us a little break from the onslaught of information it's it so nice behind an obscure undercover operation that may or may not be linked to real life assassinations as you can tell there's a hell of a lot going on here so let's recap on the facts and outline what we definitively know so far. Okay, so for anybody who's just joining us, here's a bit of a recap for the first 30 minutes of the video. I'm gonna let this play while I pee. For one, in 2007, an account was made named Religion of Peace. He claimed to be an old man and was a moderator for r slash jailbait. Two, Religion of Peace claimed to be 79. However, there were instances of him slipping up and claiming he's 70, effectively knocking his credibility down a bit. Of course, he could have mistyped since the 9 and 0 are right next to each other. However, regardless, his age has been inconsistent. 3. The very same day Milo died, an account named 26 suddenly announced his passing. This account carries similar interests to another online alias named Angel26. However, their typing styles are distinct. 4. The website LakeCityQuietPills.com is tied to Angel26 given their email address. 5. The Lake City Quiet Pills website legitimately hosted images over the course of years. And 6. There were hidden messages in their website source code, hinting at potential organized crime. To be honest, everything past this, while fun to dig through, has been purely conjecture and theory based upon the foundation of prior theories. Personally, I don't believe that these people are tied to the assassination of Mamoun al Mabu, which is why I didn't dig much into it. However, I do believe that there's another overarching mystery here. LakeCityQuietPills.com has been a monumental a nice internet rabbit hole spanning model. decades, and to date, a definite identity hasn't ever been tied to it. Alongside that, we never got closure about the Angel and Reddit 26 discrepancy. Who were they? Where did they come from, and where did they go after the Milo situation? Also, whatever came of that old guy's image host? I wonder if anyone will ever solve that code. 
I mean, it's assuming it's a solvable code. It could be gibberish after they realized that people were buying into whatever they were doing. The whole site could be a hoax. I, I don't know. You can recall from FARC, they've had the domain as far back as 2001. So how exactly did it begin? Nightmind, different, uh, different spooky internet stuff host. If you can't tell by now, we ain't done here. Oh yeah, we're only halfway through the video. Got a lot of loose ends to wrap up, so enough of me rambling. Let's go find some answers. That was really rude of the uh, marker thing. Just cut it off. Just cut off Nexpo as he was speaking. Being a little bit of a dick, I think. This is a bomb ass aesthetic, by the way. All the, like all this, this whole sequence. Like we touched on, there seemed to be a glaring inconsistency with this comment that was left on a post asking about Reddit or Ages. As we can recall, Religion of Peace was extremely transparent about his life and made it absolutely clear that everyone knew that he was 79. Now, a few moments ago, I entertained the possibility that this Neo City's emo core is that an official branding for? An existing aesthetic? Neo City's emo core? Andy Comics could have been a simple typo, which it very well could be. However, this July claim is interesting. Let me explain. What you're looking at is a website archive from August 9th of 2009, just three weeks after Milo's passing. Above where the website images otherwise would be, we can observe an. <laughs> so. I like to, <coughs> I like to imagine that y you can see the individual pixel lines in this, right? I like to imagine that Nexpo like just has like a really specific angle he's trying to get when he records his monitor with the camera, because he he's either doing two things: he's either recording the monitor with this thing on it, or he's screen recording the monitor and putting these effects on afterwards. Which I don't know which is funnier, but just imagining him getting the camera into position. Like, come on, come on, and like how awkward that has to be to have the camera that close up to the thing you're trying to record is funny as hell. Interesting detail. Rest in peace, Milo. January 20th, 1930 to July 17th, 2009. So not only did Milo get his own age wrong, but also his birth month. Even stranger, his supposed birthday month turned out to be his actual death month, which raises suspicion that this alleged death event might have been premeditated by either Angel 26 or a group of people that were close to him. Yeah, I gotta fight for that As we can recall, game. the Reddit 26 account and the Angel 26 accounts had wildly differing typing styles over the course of just a few years, lending to our suspicion that these accounts were run by separate people. With this in mind, I began poking around the image host archives. Gorilla Pod moment? No, seriously. Anytime I've had to record at my desk, the Gorilla Pod has been a lifesaver. Because it's like a it's like a dwarf tripod that you can shove into all sorts of positions. Even when especially when I'm traveling, it's super useful. So finding any clues on how we can verify this, and found that, surprisingly, some of the pictures are still accessible today and harbor a glaring similarity that leads us deeper into this rabbit hole. On each of them we can observe a single watermark pointing us to a website named drunkenstepfather.com. Thanks for blurring that next but I'm not trying to see that shit. Drunken Stepfather is a website harboring images with naked celebrities and you get the idea. Clearly there's a crossover in content between that old guy's image host and Drunken Stepfather, so it somewhat makes sense. Why Interestingly that, though, if we perform a forum search for the string that old guy's image host, we're able to find a thread created by a familiar name. 26. Wait a Wait a second. Maid Mao! What's uh what what's the I see you in my chat. What what what's this? What's this? What, what, why, 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 very, what, what, what's, uh, what's going on here? What, what's the, what's the correlation? Care to explain yourself? Maid Mad was here? Maid Mad was on this website, too, apparently. 
and 75 pages long and spans four entire years from 2010 up until the website's death and surprisingly paints. It says Madam Yeo, I know, it's just like funny how similar it is. Clear picture as to what was going on during that time. Bestie, that's Madam, I know, it was a joke. <laughs> Posted on the 15th of April, 2010, things kick off when 26 simply claims that that old guy's image host is up. Below this, I know nothing, I swear. I believe you. You're on thin ice, bud. There were of other users thanking them for their efforts and expressing excitement that they're able to begin uploading porn again. Further on, on page six, we can observe a comment by a user named Satan666 in which <laughs> they claim, Man, 26, I don't know how to thank I, you. I was distracted with that joke. I gotta run this back a little bit. Sending higher six. It's 75 pages long and spans four entire years from 2010 up until the website's death and surprisingly paints an immensely clear picture as to what was going on during that time. Posted on the 15th of April, 2010, things kick off when 26 simply claims that that old guy's image host is up. Below this, we're able to find a plethora of other users thanking them for their efforts and expressing excitement that they're able to begin uploading porn again. Peter Griffin. Further on, on page six, we can observe a comment by a user named Satan666 in which they claim, Man, 26, I don't know how to thank you for all your hard work on this. Considering that that old guy's image host is basically running only for drunken stepfather and you don't make any money from it at all. Your work is seriously way above and beyond the Call of Duty. Thanks so much. You have no idea how appreciative I am. This is like that one meme where somebody's saying, Thanks Satan, but in reverse. Satan's just this really appreciative of someone, apparently. Verifies why so many of the archived images carried the drunken stepfather watermark. I feel like it's really glossed over how these guys were posting porn and also posting r slash jailbait. I mean, yeah, it's definitely gross all that but it's not necessarily the focus of the video so i can and i can imagine why nexpo wouldn't want to dwell on that longer than absolutely necessary mark since by this point in time after milo's supposed passing cod call of duty it, i this was so this was in 2009 and i forget that some of you are so young that call of duty is nothing but a game series to you and not like a part of the english lexicon in general like, Call of Duty was named after the saying, Call of Duty, you know, right? Thing. Most of the traffic came from not r slash jailbait, but this website alone. Furthermore, we're presented with the claim that their image host has no way to make money, which we'll soon find to be a problem. Moving on to page 9, we can observe this manifest into a real-world issue. On the 10th of May, a user named Just Groovin makes a comment about the website's loading times. To which the Reddit 26 responds, I, I'm so used to seeing some bonk ass usernames on Twitter because of how big the website is that seeing all these OG ads or really unique usernames is throwing me for a loop until I realize it's a super obscure forum. And they've been altering client settings and are frustratingly out of ideas on how to fix it. Heading down a bit further, we're able to observe an interaction between a Predator 24 and Satan 666. Predator inquires. How long has it been since the website went down? Is it a money problem as to why the site's been a disappointment lately? It used to be awesome, but now... Give me one I second, mean, I gotta on. get some water and I don't want to play the video while I'm just... Are you guys ready for a certified white chewing into the microphone moment? Come on, really? Please get it back to how it was. To which Satan responds, Milo left him 25 grand when he passed. I seriously doubt it's a money issue. Plus, I've offered multiple times to pay for server costs and bandwidth, and 2-6 won't have it. I'm sure these are little problems that'll get worked out. 
Shit happens. Even Imager went down a couple times the past few days. How much trouble has Drunken Stepfather had getting banned from image hosts? 2-6 is doing us a favor by keeping the site running and paying out of his own pocket. Don't forget that. He makes zero money from this site and keeps it free of adverts. Now, while this initially seems like a noble move by 2-6, we soon find that his life noble will take a sudden and imagers. unexpected turn. Over the next few months, a barrage of comments would flood in about 2-6 heading out to a mission in Uganda, explaining the various server issues. However, by October, Satan666 would announce his eventual death. No, According not 2-6. To to from Shade, he had suffered a stroke before falling into a coma and passing away. Monday, October 25th. I wish it could be a joke. Truly, I do. On the 31st, his living will goes into effect and the life support will be turned off. I've been working with 2Sex for almost 25 years. I never expected to see him like this. Dead, sure, but not falling apart in a hospital bed. Milo went last year and now 2Sex looks to be checking out. We've had a real rough patch here. 2Sex's replacement will be taken over tomorrow. I've given him 2 Six's notes, and between us, we've deciphered most of it. With the notes and the kid we had in to work on the network for us, we don't expect any problems. Shade. That replacement was a user named JP4, and in December of that year, Satan666 would officially announce it. For those that haven't read it in other threads, JP4 is 2 Six's replacement, so yes, he is part of the crew just to clear up any confusion. For the next year, JP4 had his work cut out for him. He was found on various other websites trying to raise funds for that old guy's image host. However, his success in doing so is undetermined. Fast forward to August though, and LakeCityQuietPills.com begins a years long stretch in which it would shift hands between four other owners. In August of 2011, a user named Pierce replaces JP4. In October, someone named Bishop replaces Pierce. In May 2012, a Kim replaces Bishop. And last but not least, in October of that year, its seventh and final owner takes the helm, named Madame Meow. Now, as you can tell, this group was shifting through admins like No Tomorrow. And interestingly, during this time span, these people would occasionally share key information, allowing us to formulate a rough location from where LakeCityQuietPills.com was hosted. For instance, on the 26th of August, 2011, Pierce had announced that Hurricane Irene, affecting the Northeastern United States, would temporarily take the site offline. In October of that same year, Bishop jumped in with another, warning about the impending Halloween nor'easter snowstorm that affected the same region. Even further evidence pointing here came on the 17th of November. That Fuck, sorry, I... <laughs> Uh, dude, I just, my fucking brain glazed over for the last two minutes. I gotta wind it back. I'm really sorry, guys. And thank you for the comments on the song, man. Or the compliments of the song, man. Off. I've been working with... According to an email from Shane, Triple Rough is into December of that year. I'll do, I'll do this in double speed. For those that haven't read it in other threads, JD4 is 2 his replacement. So, yes, he is part of the crew. Just to clear up any confusion. For the next year, JP4 had his work cut out for him. He was found on various other websites trying to raise funds for that old guy's image host. However, his success in the is real. Fast forward to August, though, and LakeCityQuietPills.com begins a years-long stretch in which it would shift hands between four other owners. In August of 2011, a user named Pierce replaces JP4. In October, someone named Bishop replaces Pierce. L. In May 2012, a Kim replaces Bishop. And last but not least, in October of that year, its seventh and final owner takes the helm, named Madame Meow. Now, as you can tell, what do you, what, what, what are you, do you have something to say for yourself, Maiden Mouth? Do you have something to say for yourself? It's like no tomorrow. And interestingly, during this time span, these people would occasionally share key information, allowing us to formulate a rough location from where LakeCityQuietPills.com was hosted. For instance, on the 26th of August, 2011, Pierce had announced that Hurricane Irene, affecting the northeastern United States, would temporarily take the site offline. In October of that same year, Bishop jumped in with another, warning about the impending Halloween nor'easter snowstorm that affected the same region. Even further evidence pointing here came on the 17th of November. That day, a user named The Snake shared an email from Bishop, imploring site users to run a trace route terminal command to test their intermittent server issues. Within this, he provided an IP address, and after geolocating it, we found that it points us to the state of New Jersey, aligning with where those two storms took place. It's always New Jersey, man. It always comes back to that fucking state. That, it's that or Florida. Keep this in mind. We'll come back to it. At the end of the day, 
LakeCityQuietPills.com was, for its entire life, plagued with problems. From management to constant downtime, they were reactive in handling this website in lieu of being proactive. No further hidden job board postings ever came, and by 2014, the website would go offline for good. With it, Shade, 26, JP4, Pierce, Bishop, and Kim would vanish, leaving the corpses of their online personas forever behind them. Lost in the crystal wind. Begin. It's like a sonic level. Apprehensive music. God, this aesthetic is killer, man. This old internet shit. Like, Windows XP aesthetic is cool, but old internet design the I think is for Lake City is shown to be from the year 2004. And the web page we get? Pretty uneventful. Here, we can observe a basic placeholder page for a future website named ensimbasic.rackshack.net. Ensim essentially was a hosting automation software that was available for Windows PCs back in the early 2000s, which is likely why we see this phrase in the web address. Unfortunately, there aren't any archives for this Ensim Basic web address outright. However, given that this was utilized as a redirect for LakeCityQuietPills.com as far- What is the next stream? Right now, bitch! It's happening right now! Back as 2004, we can assume that there's more to the story. As we can recall, Angel26 was active on FARC as far back as 2001, so the concept of Lake City Quiet Pills ostensibly dips back as far as the late 90s. While this Rack Shack domain might appear to be the earliest, the URL registration details- You forgot you're not watching the actual video? Did the big fucking green blob in the bottom left corner not dip you off? Very much deeper. Tried to see how According much we have left? Stats, a historical yeah, registration database. We can observe that LakeCityQuietPills.com was first purchased in September of 2001, utilizing a domain host named CrystalWind.com. Now, this might seem innocuous and insignificant. However, the CrystalWind domain actually harbors an extensive history that we'll soon find to be related to Lake City Quiet Pills. The amount of times I've heard him say the Lake City Quiet Pills makes it sound like a basketball team. Yo, guys, we're like in the rabbit hole. This is actually the inside of a cigarette. Welcome to the first archive of CrystalWind.com. The site's home to a startup company named Crystal Wind Consulting, run by a man named Mike. At first glance, things seem completely fine. The homepage invites viewers to reach out if they need help web hosting, and that they'll be happy to provide it. No big deal. Everything checks out. Over the course of the next year and a half, the website would undergo minor yet notable changes. As it turned out, Mike was highly opinionated with politics and the state of world events, a personality trait that undoubtedly sounds familiar. Hmm. In December of 1998, we can observe the Crystal Wind website update with a quote from Bill Clinton regarding Richard Nixon. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, th this kind of reminds me, it, d to those of you who saw the video from today that I uploaded, it was on video, like I had an opening bit where I mentioned a nuclear close call we had, and while browsing that wiki, I found another one where President Nixon, you know me, who was infamously a fucking alcoholic while he was in office, uh, called a nuclear strike on North Korea, and it only didn't happen because one of his uh, cabinet members called like told the people in charge of like sending that shit to not do it which is insane is this an arg uh not an arg it's an authentic internet mystery that has remained unsolved up till now at the bottom of it first time i'm hearing of it but we can observe him i'm gonna google it we gotta know I, i'll try caps, and find it again as we watch this demand that he takes his own advice now this was a different time period right in the middle of the wild west days of the internet so mike rip and the president after the 19, let me, let me check this. Okay, after the 1969 EC-121 shootdown incident, 
F-4 Phantom Fighter jets at Kunsan Air Base were ordered to load B-61 nuclear bombs and begin planning and preparations for a nuclear strike against North Korea. After a few hours, the order to stand down was given. The jet never took off. Reportedly, President Richard Nixon was drunk when he gave the order for a nuclear attack. The order to stand down was given on the advice of Secretary of State Henry Kissinger. <laughs> on his business website isn't all that weird. so it's not it's not a hundred percent confirmed but people do know that richard nixon fucking got hella swifty in the oval office and um that's the reporting or is it honestly i don't know the main takeaway here is that he appears to be opinionated and isn't afraid to show it moving on to october 5th 1999 crystal wind updates once more with the link titled go tiger Nuts a site about Chinese space news. At the very bottom of his homepage though, we can observe a strange link claiming, don't use these email contacts. Heading to that page presents a bizarre assortment of nonsensical email addresses and Cicero. website links, and clicking on them brings us further and further into a wormhole of endless web pages. Now, this could be an attempt to capitalize on random SEO. However, I find- You're watching Nexpo? Yes. One of my favorite creators. It's strange that this list is public. Anyway, circling back to Crystal Wind, if we click on their link titled We're allowed to be drunk and president at the same time, I'm pretty sure most presidents in like the last few decades have been sober. I'm pretty sure Biden's sober. I know Trump didn't drink or smoke or anything. I'm pretty sure Obama uh, was sober as well. I don't know about Bush. Um, but the the vast majority of presidents in recent decades have been not under have not never really been under the influence because like you kind of have to always be ready from what i understand our customers were simply met with this another strange out of place page for a business website but perhaps he was having a bit of fun moving on march 2nd of 2000 the website adds another domain to its repertoire biden would die from drinking el emilio he's like 80 Dude, the only thing 80-year-olds do is drink. Like, they don't have to worry about long-term effects anymore. Like, it won't kill him instantly. Is, isn't that, like, that's, that's not how that works. All else remains the same. On June 13th of that same Like, I don't, I don't know if you guys have ever met an 80-year-old, but my, all the ones I've met are, like, straight alcoholics. The homepage would vanish entirely. Instead of promoting their company or obtaining new clients. Yeah, Biden is never going to die because you'll forget to. Clients. The crystal wind domain would simply show the face and quote we saw prior. And for the rest of the year, the website would remain- I just realized how well the alcoholic bit fits with you as Nixon, right? Right? He's my spirit president. This way. Frozen in time. Hey, I will say this though, he was definitely worse than me. And also the president, so like, it was a problem when he drank it's at all. It's when we jump forward to September, right after 9-11, however, when things change. I need to run this back. I, com I completely Almost blanked. Would simply show the face and quote we saw prior. March 2nd of 2000. Customers were simply met with the watch. At the very bottom of his homepage, though, we can observe a strange link claiming the main takeaway here is that he appears to be opinionated and isn't afraid to show it. Moving on to October 5th, 1999. Crystal Wind updates once more with a link titled Go Tiger Nuts, a site about Chinese space news. At the very bottom of his homepage, though, we can observe a strange link claiming don't use these email contacts. Heading to that page presents a bizarre assortment of nonsense email addresses and website links, and clicking on them brings us further and further into a wormhole of endless web pages. Now, this could be an attempt to capitalize on random SEO. However, I find it strange that this list is public. Anyway, circling back to Crystal Wind, if we click on their link titled Our Customers, we're simply met with this. Another strange, out of place page for a business website. But perhaps he was having a bit of fun. Moving on, March 2nd of 2000, the website adds another domain to its repertoire. All else remains the same. On June 13th of that same year, however, the homepage would vanish entirely. Instead of promoting their company or obtaining new clients, the Crystal Wind domain would simply show the face and quote we saw prior. And for the rest of the year, the website will remain this way, frozen in time. It's when we jump forward to September, right after 9-11, however, when things change. It's always 9-11. You pig spawned? Yeah, I, I watch videos at 2x a lot, just for, if it, like, speed reasons and also for attention span reasons. Um, but also because I didn't want to make me re-watching the thing take as long. I'm sure you can see how far we're diverting from the website's original purpose. 
what appeared to be a simple web post slowly began showcasing political opinions before harboring a page full of bizarre links, shutting down entirely, being replaced by a simple quote, and is now showcasing a message aimed at the perpetrators of 9-11. There's a growing sentiment that there's more than meets the eye with crystalwind.com, and for years, this website would harbor nothing but this message. No links, no redirects, nothing. On April 1st of 2004, however, the website updates for the first time in years. And I open. Familiar. Before us, we have that same placeholder page from LakeCityQuietPills.com from around the same time as the earliest archive of that website. Uh, what's wrong with loving goats? They're cute. Hey, do you really want me to explain it? Are you really going to make me explain it? Hey, I'm, I'm just, ugh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to just, I'm going to just pass up on this one. Both of these URLs were set to redirect to this single page, effectively cementing the connection between that old guy's image host and Crystal Wind Consulting. As we can recall. Yes. Oh, God. No, I'm good. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Just scratch on that. Though, there was a considerable gap. Goats are adorable. I have two. It's pets. No, please. Uh, okay, so that was supposed to be a message addressed to the folks who did 9-11, who were, like, Islamic extremists. And it's, like, a very, like, like stereotypical thing to say that, like, people over there fuck goats. That's why they called them lovers of goats. Okay, it's very, it's very, like, crude. I, <laughs> Before LakeCityQuietPills.com. It's a, it's a derogatory thing. What came to be. From 2004 to 2009... There was nothing. I, I'm surprised you guys have never heard that. Like, I'm surprised you've never heard anyone say something or, like, seen on the internet something in that vein. Not a speck of evidence as to what the site was used for. Luckily for us, though, the same can be said for crystalwind.com. The archive you're looking at is from the year 2007. And to be honest, seems a bit unorthodox. After browsing through each of these links, I found that the outliers are in these two, Scooby and Sharky. Heading to the former Scooby. presents us with various files. A blindfold, a body tank, DJ headphones, and an experiment table. Gross. Bizarrely, each of these display a 3D model of a woman in a distressing position. And if we consider each of the items she listed doesn't seem here, very distressed, to we be can fair. deduce that this is perhaps some sort of fetish thing. Do you think? Backing out and checking out Sharky gives us more of the same. Here, we can observe an entire section of this website with various 3D maps, models, hairstyles, and rooms. Weirded out, I decided to poke around a bit and found that here too, the downloads are still accessible. I checked out this rocket vampire model, and upon unzipping the parent folder, I noticed this readme file within it. Some notable bits of info here are the website cybergatecorp.ch and the credits, which thank a person named Trent the Thief for spending the needed web space for this piece. Upon digging into cybergatecorp.ch, I happened upon a storefront that was incredibly similar to the pages found on Crystal Wind. At the top, we can observe links to various websites, and this one in particular I takes can't us believe to he downloaded this shit. I hope to God he used a virtual machine. Or like he had a separate computer that he set up a virtual machine inside of so that like it in it with like seven layers of vpn like that shit is terrifying to me like i, I just don't poke around these places a website called 3d commune I'd be, i'm too scared to after scanning their site i'm oh. sure you can gauge the type of 3d models that were sold here it's yet another domain that aligns with everything else in this mystery especially considering what we know about a very specific person who used a 3d modeling website as well Either everyone was into the same topic around the same time period, or this Trent the Thief person is pulling some strings behind the scenes. To ease my hunch that this was Mike, I performed a search for both Crystal Wind and his name, and found this archived email thread from 1997. And at the very bottom, what name do we find? Trent. If we back up and really take a look at every coincidence so far, 
The case of Mike being religion of peace and even Angel 26 grows stronger the further down this rabbit hole we go. Mike has verifiably used personas, exhibited bizarre behavior on his business website, and harbors shared affinities with the others we've covered in this video. So let's back up, put everything on the table, and make our case. Ladies and gentlemen, to me, the mystery of Lake City Quiet Pills goes a little something like this. Okay, before before we get into the last stretch of this, I'm going to run a quick ad break. Uh, P? And Mike A, like Michael Afton, I fucking hate you. Thanks for the sub, Jay Saltine. I'll be back in a minute. I was having a bit of a think while I was peeing, and if if you really contemplate it, I would I realized that um, the first monster fucker dating sim I played was that Undertale one, because those were all monsters that were romanceable except for Frisk, and I'm not romancing them. So, Damn, that skeleton's hanging, I just realized. Let's begin with Angel 26. As we know, they were a person that had a highly similar typing style to Religion of Peace, and also held a Lake City email address as far back as 2001. Furthermore, we know that they were found on ZBrush around the same time period, and if we perform a scan of the Religion of Peace Reddit account with this in mind, we find that... Aha. Uh -huh. How coincidental especially considering that we can find Trent the Thief on this side as well. We can find another interesting parallel if we head to the latest archive of crystalwind.com and inspect the page source. As we can see, there are hidden messages utilizing the exact same method on the Lake City Quiet Pills job board. However, here, it's mostly innocuous information about TI calculator keys. Regardless, the idea- Quite if you were to have a weapon of any kind, what would it be? A gun, because that's like the only useful weapon in the modern era. Or it's the most dominant form if you're trying to like have any sort of equal like equalizer out there. Unless we're talking fictional, in which case, probably a lightsaber. Is there, and this method is by no means common. Yet another link surfaces if we check the crystalwind.com IP address. Here, we get a result pointing us to the state of New Jersey. And the thing is, I already have a gun, like, yeah, you know how that is. Cross-checking it with the IP from Bishop's email, we find that they are an exact match. Ooh. Bishop's email was sent about 10 years after Crystal Wind supposedly stopped hosting Lake City Quiet Pills. So if Mike were completely removed from everything about this mystery, why are their server IPs the exact same? Even further connections arise when you really get into the nitty-gritty of Religion of Peace's post history. <laughs> said nitty-gritty. Remember that quote from Crystal Wind? Well, Religion of Peace references the exact same author. 
Remember Angel 26's Yahoo comments? Both Angel and Milo misspell a very specific word in the exact same fashion. Why do they have now, to mention from this it point, twice? I knew there were theories out there and we had our correlations, but I wanted to make absolutely damn sure that we put this rabbit hole to bed for good. I enlisted the help of a few private investigators who oh. took this information and performed open source data pivoting with the accounts we suspected were related. You went and to after private a time of connecting and forking, we found this email tied to an old forgotten Angel26 account from 2009, predating the events of Lake City Quiet Pills. And upon reverse searching this address, you'd be surprised at who it's tied to. Uh -huh. This mic is also tied to emails from the crystal window. They, I don't know why, but that eye like kind of creeped me out. Like I had like a little and sinking pit in my stomach. Is also t like, I, I don't know that like this image just kind of fucks me up. This mic is also tied to emails from the crystal window main and yeah, fucking bingo. <laughs> I know I can, I can imagine him getting that. He's like, boom, let's fucking go, baby. There's the, that's the, that's the conclusion. That's the last paragraph. He's also connected to a ton of other emails related to the Instagram travel blogger in this picture which I find incredibly strange, but that's a whole ass rabbit hole for another time. Yeah, who is that? Who is that? This guy seems to have been pulling the strings this entire time, and I'm convinced that he created not only Religion of Peace, but Angel 26, the Reddit 26, and even Shade. Thinking back, we always had an impression that Milo's life was too extraordinary to be true, and combined with that monumental slip up about his own age, it's taught us an interesting lesson. For someone surrounded by so many remarkable and unbelievable circumstances, perhaps the best explanation has always been the easiest one. That his life isn't real, because he simply did not exist. Milo was a moderator for one of the most controversial subreddits of all time. Milo openly hosted his own image website, placing the burden of guilt for any illegal material solely on himself. It was time for him to die to pass the torch of liability. And what better way to do that than announcing it with another burner alias that also, just one year later, would pass away too. It seems that this entire mystery stems from Mike's own regret of his image board self-promotion through the Religion of Peace account. He had second thoughts and needed distance, a way to cleanse himself from the baggage. Bruh, he was and, doing damage well, control the whole time. You know the rest of what went down. He went crazy with his campaign, the to be fair. of Lake City Quiet Pills was born. Now, regarding the other users of Drunken Stepfather, it's unclear if they were simply in on it, or if they were completely oblivious to everything going on. It's honestly impossible to say. However, my bets lie in the latter. Their community, much like us, were getting duped for years. But considering what they were using the image no host for anyway, tricks. I don't think they really cared. Regardless, whether they knew it or not, they were a part of one of the largest internet mysteries in history. And if they ever see this, like, somewhere down the, the line- These old 2009 message boards read like how uh, business execs think people on the internet talk today. Like if you saw the Batman, the section where the Riddler is on Instagram live with his 500 followers and the way they're talking in the comments, that, that's how some of these read. Because no, no one talks like that on Twitter. Perhaps they can look back and think, holy shit, who would have thought? That jump scared me. Well, ain't this the mystery that keeps on giving? Alright, so some infos come to light in a very late stage of this script, and I'd like to share it. Ooh. On September 24th, 2017, a strange event went down on the Drunken Stepfather forums. That evening, Madame Meow's account was hacked and deleted. Hmm. What do, you, what do you have to say about this, Maid Mao? What, what do you, what do you, what do you, what do you, sorry, Quickly the bit's over. That's a, we, I've beaten that one to death enough. I'll, leave, I'll let you live. In this thread, people discussed what they think happened, and upon jumping to page five, we can observe a response from the website's creator. Just to clear up some things. I love Madame Meow. She's the star of DSF. 
I would never delete all her contributions. Without her, there's no DSF. She's the only one who actually matters. The rest of you were the worst. It looks like someone got into the back end of the forum, and not in a good way. Not a way we don't like to watch get into a back end, but in an asshole way, and deleted her account. Bruh. Specifically her account. Targeted. I have no idea why. A few other accounts were deleted also. We're trying to restore the forum from a time before Meow was deleted by whoever got into the back end. This will bring back her OG account. We're also trying to patch up whatever holes there are in the system that allowed for things like this to happen. I've made her a temp account while we figure this out. Now, at first, it might seem unsurprising. The site is relatively archaic, and hacks like this are par for the course online. What I find interesting, though, is that when backing up and considering the scope of everything we've seen so far, the accounts of Shade, 26, JP4, Bishop, Kim, Pierce, and Satan666, the main players from the site's heyday, are all gone. Wiped. This is strange to me, because 26 had supposedly died, rendering this deletion impossible unless someone knew his login. Weirdest of all, however, if we head to the Lake City Quiet Pills subreddit, we can find a bizarre post from a user named Retirement Plan LCQP made just one day before this forum hack took place. In this post, the user implores people to stop looking into this mystery, gives some background on Milo and Shade, and closes things off with a peculiar phrase. A message to the LCQP. I cleared your tracks. Have a good one. When I first encountered this post, I figured this line was aimed at the audience. However, considering the hack and how every Lake City related forum account is gone, I now suspect that it's not the case. Despite this, the connections we've made to Mike all point to him being Milo. I still stand by that theory because there are too many correlations to overlook. Probably, yeah. What I won't deny, though, is that something weird took place that day, giving me second thoughts on the people behind the other accounts. Perhaps it was Jesus, the website's owner, or maybe it was a rogue admin. I don't know. But contrary to my initial belief, maybe Mike wasn't a one-man army. After all. Damn, crazy ass video. It's it, it's weird. It's like insane how much niche internet lore there is that will suck you in if you learn about it. Like, uh, I, I don't know. Stuff like that just blows my mind. Oh, the video's over? Yeah, that's the end. The internet is so fucking weird, but also mysterious. It's a big place, man. How long have I been here? Uh, we've been streaming for like two and a half hours, just about. That was a lot of information. Yeah, but it was very interesting. Again... That was Nexpo. If you if you're unaware, he's he makes a lot of videos like that. His back catalog is very well worth binging. He, like there, I have I'm still working my way through it. That, that three hour Gemini video he has, I want to watch on my own time because I'm sure it's really good. But I I, <laughs> I don't have the, I don't I don't think I could watch that on stream. <laughs> There's like other stuff too that I would um there's, all of there's like this one channel I watch called Trap Geek. Um and he covers a lot of uh like not obscure but specific street beef that like certain raps and gangs have. And it's super interesting, but it's like grim stuff, so I don't know if I can show it on Twitch. But he does like insane research for every single one of them and they're I don't know. They, they they pull me in every time. Thoughts on Michael Reeves? Great creator. Gemini Entertainment scares me, but only because I was born in June. 
what's he called again? Nexpo. The guy we just watched is Nexpo, I mean. If it's on YouTube, should be able to show on Twitch. Well, it's the subject matter specifically. Um, like, I'll need to, uh, it, it's, I'll need to check if they're age-restricted, because if it is age-restricted, I think even that might be too much for Twitch. And I think a good bit of his videos are, uh, are age-restricted. So, uh, you, we can, we can watch one. We can, we can watch one that I thought was particularly interesting. This is, um, about, like, gang activity and disrupt's great as well i love disrupt but like this is about like gang activity happening in washington dc you can't find him here i i, I linked his channel a bunch well, i'll do it again besides the music you're getting a lot of attention on the internet <laughs> um, i did my research on you um, it's another guy, no savage, um, he lit just like you. People making it seem like it's an issue though. Is it being hyped up or everything cool? Man, they dragging that shit. It ain't nothing. It ain't really nothing? It ain't nothing. You know what it is, for real. That's it. Weezer is a good fan. Tonight, a motorist pulled up to this intersection, yelled to me, has the killer been caught? I told him no. And it shows you the level of concern here in Shaw caused by last night's shooting. You can't watch real life people get shot. There's no footage of that, but it does describe like events that have happened. Obviously, you can't show someone actually getting like it be done to them on on a YouTube video. This one's not age restricted, so it's not going to be something like that. But the it, like it is covering real stuff that's happened out there that is very gruesome. What? So if you if that's not up your alley, uh, come back in 10, 15 minutes. Here on the sidewalk behind me. All right, what's up, everybody? We got to talk about the D.C. drill scene that's been heating up. Most of the attention's been on Brooklyn drill and before that Chicago. But with D.C. rappers like No Savage and Walk Down Will getting millions of views consistently, people are starting to tune in. Washington, D.C. is the capital of the U.S., but it often goes under the radar since it's a small city in the DMV tri Trap warlocks make... Trap Lore Ross makes good videos on gangs. I've seen a few Trap Lore Ross videos. I personally just prefer Trap Geek, but Trap Geek uploads way less. The area. This is the story. Thanks for the sub in a move. Appreciate it. Of two neighborhoods that are five minutes from each other, 37th and Simple City, and they do not get along. Both of them are in the Southeast DC, and the tension is so bad that kids from both neighborhoods cannot be put in the same school. In 2019, the music escalated tensions. The rapper No Savage from 37th was heavily dissing his ops at a Simple City. At the same time, No Savage was putting on this other rapper from his area named Act the Clicker who was going viral, getting hundreds of thousands of views because his content was only focused on disrespecting the dead folks of Simple City and dropping direct disses towards the rival rapper, Walk Down Will. And at the start of the new year last year, actor Clicka was found dead outside the train station near Howard University after a drive-by in a white SUV that was caught on camera. The police say actor Clicka was lured to the train station by a girl through DMs on Instagram. But the story gets more complicated. A couple months later, the police would arrest Walk Down Will, the rival rapper, as the main murder suspect, claiming he was the one who hacked into the girl's Instagram. Left to go eat dinner, what did I miss? Uh, we finished up that next book video and now we're watching a, a trap lord set the whole thing up three members of walk down's crew were arrested as well but the case has more holes than a dartboard a lot of folks close to the situation don't believe walk down did it and since act the clicker's death there's been shootings every week 37th retaliating with drive-bys and a simple city kid who's just 16 years old was arrested for four murders and seven attempts just months after act the clicker was killed now we're gonna get into all this but first we're blessed for the song of the day today from my guy millie's and jim jones let's go i'm not I'm listening to this shit see to help people the all right this is the city of politicians washington dc's got all the suits from both sides that's where they go to make laws and budgets supposedly to help people yet somehow in their own backyard dc is number six in youth incarceration and number two in youth homelessness there's the sub made my appreciate it always in the you're forgiven for your acts in the last video for now top 10 homicide rates in the country despite being a small city of just 700,000 people and since it's the federal capital washington is not considered a state so residents don't got voting representation 
representation in Congress or in the Senate. Historically, DC has always been the pulse of the DMV area. It's got all the clubs, the malls, the sports teams, the birthplace of go-go music which inspired artists like Wale and others. But in the late 2000s, early 2010s, go-go concerts were being shut down all over the city. The government viewed these parties and bands as inciters of violence, forcing clubs to shut down. A lot of the pioneers got locked up silencing the scene. During that time though, the kids were on a different regime, instilling this regional drill sound that was going viral in the DMV area. That's Walk Down Will, considered to be one of the young pioneers of DC drill. And in order to understand this story, we're going to his neighborhood of Simple City in Southeast DC. Simple City's been in a brutal war with 37th, the neighborhood that's five minutes over from them for many decades. Passed down from Abraham, generation, come, and speaking to the people from come. there, nobody actually knows what started it. In DC, they don't color bang, it's no gangs really, just neighborhoods. Around 2014, 37th had people like Shy Glizzy with his record awesome that was scorching hot all over the country. And then again in 2017, Shy Glizzy had the Grammy nominated track Crew with Goldlink. Being that he was one of the few rappers out of DC to have a Billboard Hot 100 hit, Glizzy basically gave bragging rights to 37th, which is his home. But internal beef was brewing. Glizzy was having tensions with younger casts from his area, like No Savage right, so and Young Jose, who thought that Shy wasn't doing enough for them or for 37th. Say Glizzy can't come to the hood. Uh, uh, <laughs> hey, who run, who run 37? Okay. Now you travel just five minutes over to Simple City. Around that time, 2016, 2017, they weren't doing too much musically. Although Simple City is home to legends like Marvin Gaye. But one headline you'll probably remember revolves around the name OG Man Man. New details about the Hampton University student who fell to his death early this morning. Investigators still piecing together what happened in Richmond. Here's Marissa Jasek. Affiliated with Simple and hung around Simple City for protection, OG Man Man was a rapper who touched at least 1 million views in 2016 after filming this wild music video at the gravesite of his ops, violating the gravesite, pouring alcohol all over. People like DJ Academics covered it. I remember Blackie Speaks made a video. This was all over the news. Well, OG Man Man- Yeah, that shit is insane to me. Just like the lengths they will go just to shit on someone who's like, they don't like. Ended up getting backdoored, murdered at a cookout in his home territory, basically. Even the Simple City folks who protected him weren't feeling what he was doing. Said it was too extra. Regardless, the 37th and Simple City war raged on all throughout 2017, 2018. Then those Savage emerged. Rap Desecrate your rival's grave for your music video. Yeah, I remember there was like one where a dude was recreating the deaths of like some of his like ops. That shit was insane. That's why y'all don't get nowhere. Omari, that's why you ain't got no deals. That's why you ain't got nothing. You don't get nowhere off rapping because you niggas bitches. This super energetic rapper from 37th who had the youth on lock. And after initial tension with elders like Shy Glizzy were swept under the rug, No Savage had a direct path towards being DC's hottest rapper. But the street shit was making its way into songs. Even before his rival Walk Down Will started rapping, No Savage had this song called Shots For Everybody, dissing Simple City in July of 2019. Every, I, the cameraman of every single one of these music videos has to be peeing himself whenever he gets like a shot where they're pointing guns at the camera. I'd like make them, I'd like put the camera on like a sliding thing and tell them to point it at that. Like I, there's no way I'd be behind it. White start rapping about smoking his YouTube. Eye. That would be like the corniest shit I could e ever do. Like saying, yeah, I'm going to smoke this one dude I don't like because of the videos he makes. Oh, yeah, man, that shit you said about Peppa Pig fucked up. Nah, fuck that. Nah. We are the for the Nigga, don't tell about it, about the Simple I, I don't know if you could you couldn't tell, but I'm very suburban. <laughs> quick to respond over the same beat weeks later, flipping the title to everybody gets shot. But Simple City didn't have a clear opposition in the booth to represent them on records and go against No Savage. That's when Walk Down Will emerged as Simple City's challenge to No Savage, dropping his first song in September of 2019 called Backdoor Locked. Like 
Now he's just 19 years old, but Walk Down is widely regarded as the hottest new commodity out of DC, getting label meetings with Capitol Records, Alamo, right, and you, many uh, others showing interest. Walk Down moved boxing. to Simple City from 501 at a young age after they tore down his housing complex. He was booked for robbery. What are as these a names? I don't know, they're just like rapper names. Like, your name's Bunny Bones on Twitch, fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Juvenile, but never completed probation. Police have been targeting Watdown since the beginning, banning him from doing shows with Rod Wave and The Baby, labeling him a threat to the community. Of course, Walkdown's got a tough drill sound, but unlike a lot of his ops from 37th, Walkdown was not focused on direct disses, he was more about making good music. The same cannot be said for his main op, No Savage. No Savage even has a song on his 2020 mixtape called Fuck Simp, basically dissing the whole area, and that Fuck track simp. has since been removed and is nowhere to be found on streaming services. All this Damn. set up for a brutal winter in 2019, when No Savage was promoting a rapper from 37th named Acta Clicka, who released two songs in November and December that would take the war to a new level. His song Straight Facts went viral around the DMV area at almost a half a million views. In it, Act talks about smoking on Walkdown's dead homies. He goes on to say, how's your name Walkdown but you run? Clearly taunting Walkdown and even questioning which area he's from. This gave Act the Clicker a lot of clout locally, but it also made him a prime target in the beef. And two days after releasing Straight Facts in December of 2019, one of Walkdown's homies found Act the Eventually the rapper names are gonna have numbers at the and they're already putting them at the start man 21 savage is one of the biggest rappers out he makes great music but he's got to he put the numbers first on the train by himself they're gonna start they already replaced letters with numbers now, which nobody is got cool. hurt but it could have went way left like asap rocky replaced the s with a dollar sign the click as like part of his call of duty clan himself said he wasn't strapped which led his ops to taunt him saying he must have been capping in his raps all along joking that there must have been a curfew on guns if he didn't have it with him on the train. Several days later, Walkdown, who up until then was focused only on 21, making 21. good music and not dissing, decided to respond to the recent slew of disses coming from 30 to good music. And not <laughs> Dude, dissing. I just realized the BD is using samples the fucking like <laughs> lever noise from Minecraft. Decided to respond to the recent slew of disses coming from 37th by dropping his own song titled Directed to the Ops. Yeah, and I'm thugging for real. Yeah, niggas be cowboy, they put up my name in their songs. I don't know why these niggas keep dancing. He talking to prison, so we got the drop on his house. We gon' pop up and he come up man. Christmas would go by, and the tension was reaching dangerous heights, with shootings happening every week. A few days into the new year 2020, Act the Clicker was DMing a girl. She told him to pick her up at the Shaw train station around 11.30 at night. Act the Clicker went uptown with one other person to Northwest DC near Howard University to meet this girl at Shaw train station. She told him she was outside, but when Act the Clicker arrived, they couldn't see her. So the friend went looking down the tunnel inside the station and act the clicker waited outside after a couple minutes the friend returned from the tunnel and found act the clicker laying dead on the ground shot in the head the girl was nowhere to be found on cctv footage you see a white suv pull up quickly and begin firing but nobody gets out the car and they speed off without any trace of who did it police and paramedics show up to the scene and act the clicker was taken to the hospital where he later died from his wounds Rest he peace. was only 18. now a couple months would go by and the police knew act the you can you can think that shit's dumb or like the way reason this is happening is like dumb but a being in the circumstances these guys are in is something that I will never be able to claim to have knowledge of. So I try not to judge too harshly, especially because I can't be in their shoes. And B, folks die young because of this shit all the damn time. And that's a goddamn tragedy no matter like what the circumstances were, I think. Because death was a targeted shooting, but they need proof. At the crime scene, they went through Act the Clicker's phone to find out why he was there and discovered those DMs with the girl. Somehow, those text combos were enough for DC police to put out an arrest warrant for Walk Down Will in March of 2020. Only evidence they got, allegedly Walk Down did have access to the girl's Instagram account. But the problem is Walk Down is one of many people who had access to this girl's IG account. 
Later that month, the police were desperately looking for Walkdown, who, as it turns out, had just flown down to Cali, where he posted these pics to IG. This led investigators to geolocate him via surveillance footage and the IG pictures, but when they arrived to the neighborhood in Cali where he took the photos, they couldn't locate him, and later found out he was back in DC shooting visuals for the music video Warning, which is why the intro is literally the police pulling up to the spot and arresting Walkdown right then and there and he's been locked up ever since. In DC, they do not do bond, and because he never completed his probation as a minor, Walkdown will stay in prison until his trial ends, which, knowing how the system works, could take another year to even start the trial. But the case against Walkdown remains weak. The police have been unable to ID a suspect from the security footage at the train station the night of the murder. Even so, Walkdown has an alibi. Turns out he was shot the same night that Act the Clicker was killed. <laughs> and it wasn't from gunfire. If there if there's ever been a good story for like why you didn't do that shit, it's like I was literally shot in the hospital. Between him and Act, Act the Clicker was unarmed the night he died. Now the prosecutors waved that off. They claim Walkdown shot himself in the right hand to create an alibi. Which sounds ridiculous. Nevertheless, the, the prosecutors charged him. Wait, which do you think is more likely? <laughs> and they now have nine months to indict him so sometime in february would be the next update but right Didn't now they tell from like the caliber of the bullets or like i don't i don't know if you have the specific gunshot wound uh like i don't they'd have to find the bullet that he got shot with to be able to make that call i guess walk down is in good spirits and convinced he'll be home soon that's it for this video let well, me i certainly hope he didn't do that shit you know But yeah, it's it's crazy, man. Trap Geek, if you're interested in that kind of thing, um, honestly, a really fucking dumb way to get an alibi. I don't know. It's it it seems like if it's a pretty airtight thing, if true. Do you watch true crime stuff? Not really. This is like I'm more interested in like the kind of cultural implications of a lot of the stuff on this. But if you're if you're interested in like seeing more stuff from this guy, that's Trap Geek. Um, he doesn't upload often, but when he does, it's usually like really uh, thorough studies of um, you know local gang beef. All right, I think I'm gonna do some just chatting bit for a second. I'm gonna just sit here and talk with chat like um, a very reasonable individual, that thing I am. I'm very suburban, so all this is jarring for me. Yeah, I mean, it's foreign to a lot of your guys' experience, I imagine. What happens to Wednesday's VOD? It had a lot of, um, well, it had like a, a music preview that was only supposed to be for the people in stream, so I deleted it. Thoughts on Russia's vacuum bombs? I do not know the details, but I don't know, it sounds bad. <laughs> You liked the music preview? Glad to hear. Why the hell did I just walk in on quite humming gibberish? What? Was I not speaking English a second ago? I could have swore I was just responding to chat. I don't remember half the shit I say, to be fair. You just killed the stream? What? I need to put on my relaxing Pokemon playlist. Brain fried for real? Yeah, I put it in a... the grease machine. Have I ever cried while watching a scary movie? Not cried, but definitely jumped. Or like chat my not chat myself, but figuratively chat myself. 
Please help, I'm getting harassed by Duolingo. The quickest way to make Duolingo go away is to give in. Just saying. <laughs> Have I seen the video essay about head transplants? By Jacob Geller. I was, I've was i been meaning to watch that because I love his videos. Um, I, it's just I haven't gotten around to it on stream yet. I'm definitely saving it to watch it on stream though because we watch a lot of Jacob Geller on here. We like Jacob Geller here. Did you miss the gaming time? Yeah, man, you're about an hour and a half late. Sorry, bud. Video should be going out early next week though. What is the most boring city in the United States? Probably one that I don't know the name of. Uh -uh. Understandable, have a nice day, thanks. Had you muted for like a minute, what the fuck? That was rude. Jack. What is my opinion on cheese? Pretty good. Definitely a fan. Depends on the type of cheese, but I fuck with it. What do I think about North Carolina? I don't know, it just kind of registers in my brain as one of those states. It's just another state. It's not a flyover, but it's not, like, particularly important. That's where they make Fortnite, isn't it? Fortnite! 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 What's my favorite alcoholic drink? I don't know if it's my favorite, but my go-to when I'm just hanging at home is a Quite Claw. Um, when I'm out, I like I like a Bay Breeze, but I also like getting like just uh, house cocktails because like you when you're at a specific place, you might as well get something signature, you know. But I, I'm I'm like a seltzer guy. It's definitely because it tastes better than beer, and the calorie count's fairly low. It's a good citrus G Fuel flavor. Um, I don't know if it would count as citrus, but I really like the Sonic uh, peach rings. That's my personal favorite at the moment. You had a Bud Light seltzer and almost shit yourself? I've never had a Bud Light seltzer. That doesn't sound very good. Am I ever going to do a Discord VC chat again? Maybe. I don't know when, though. That was like just a very spur-of-the-moment thing. What's your favorite kind of farmer? Definitely an experience farm. Super useful and a time saver in Minecraft. Big fan. We're going to be just chatting the rest of the stream for a little bit. This is just kind of a decompression meme for me. I play Doom, I play Friday Night Funkin', I'm not sure yet. I just kind of play it by ear. We're just chilling and vibing for real. Yeah, it's nice to do that on stream every now and then. We usually drop viewers, but we're going to do that anyways as we get into the later hours at night, so I just won't join myself. How are you so cool? I don't know. It's just effortless for me. I'm just like this normally. 
general question, do you think anyone in chat has an SO? I know I joke about you guys being hapless virgins, but that's mostly just me projecting. I'm sure, like, more than a few folks are in relationships. You've been married for a while? I believe you. It's not, like, as rare as... It, like, a married person or an in per, a real person in a relationship of, like who also uses the internet is not as rare as it seems. Do you get a lot of thirst comments? I wouldn't say a lot, but it's weird that I get a non-zero amount, considering people only see a piece of clothing. As me. Damn, imagine not getting bitches. 100% not me. I don't need to get bitches. I, I have one bitch who I'm very happily dedicated to. I get one bitch. Consistently. Favorite breed of cat or dog? Whichever one I have at a given time. So, right, smoke. Whatever she is. That's, that one's my favorite. I have another dad joke. What does stock market and Bitcoin have in common with gas prices? One is always rising. But I don't think you know what a, a dad joke is. I'm not sure you know what a joke is. <laughs> oh, how's the husband? He's napping right now. He went to bed early. He's not always up on stream nights because he knows I'm going to be at it for a while, but... It's usually pretty relaxed after that. How's <laughs> Smoke? She's doing good. Woo. Sands! What up? I remember the first Megalovania meme I ever saw in 2018, like the back of my hand. You know how a lot of people say they have a flashbulb moment for 9-11, like they know exactly where they were when they found out about it? I know exactly where I was when I first heard, uh, like, the first two notes of Megalovania in a meme. Like, as like a, as a, as like a gag, like a jump scare laugh. What do you think of Poltergeist? It's pretty good. I don't know, it's a corpse song. I liked it. I'd be down to watch it in a minute if you guys want, but not not right now. It it, it has like it, it's it, it's everything I want out of a corpse song. I, I like it more than um actually. Hmm, I was gonna say I like it more than Hot Demon Bitches, but I really like Night Lavelle on that song, so I don't know. Thoughts on Fuck You? Is that the snippet? I didn't hear that one. Corpse, fuck you. What's this? That was my first time hearing that. I definitely respect him, you know, experimenting with different kinds of instrumentals. And I think that's a decent internet direction to go in. But I, the one thing I'll say about... 
Yo, Weast, thanks for the raid, man. I hope you had a good stream. Big boy, too. But I, the thing, like, with Corpse in a lot of his songs that I found is it kind of seems like he's, like, racing to keep up with the beat a lot of the time. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just, like, something I noticed and that's, like, I don't personally uh, like in songs. But I don't know. That's just me. I think the full version of that track has a good chance to be a banger. I li I do like I will I do like the instrumental a lot. I don't know. I like that kind of glitchcore, very gamey sound. That's like the kind of shit I would look for in a beat. And it is nice to hear him on different things. I'd like I, just him like experimenting is something I'll always encourage. So good for him. If it's a song, if it's just is it a song? If it's just swear words, he sounds like he's trying to be edgy. Have you seen Corpse? No shit, he's trying to be edgy. That's like his entire brand. Like, he's got a lane and he's catering to it. I don't know. I don't understand how... Oh, he's being edgy. Like, yes. That is, that, like, he's, that is the intention. Like, I don't know how that's an argument. <laughs> like, it, 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 like, a better argument would be, is it a song if he just says the same thing over and over again? And I would also say yes to that. Key case in point, around the world. It's the same, like, four words a hundred something times. I don't know, just... <sighs> around the World is Amazing to Sleep To? It's a fucking banger, dog. No one's gonna tell you Around the World is a bad song. And if they do, they're wrong. <laughs> it does sound like something a living stoom, The Living Tombstone might produce, though. I won't lie to you. But the vocals are infinitely better than Living Tombstone's songs are. <laughs> I don't know, there's like nostalgia to those FNAF kind of voice box shits, but they fucking, like, I, like I can't, I cannot listen to them <laughs> these days, man. Like, it's, the only thing I can stand are the instrumentals and on TikToks. What's up, Beef Nugget Stew? Hope you're having a good one. Also, welcome everybody from We Stream. I just be hanging, you know what I'm saying? Does Corpse still do story narrations? I don't think so. I think he's like very focused on the music stuff and making Among Us content <laughs> or gaming content in general. Like he's he's had a pretty hard shift to the kind of group oriented stuff. Opinions on sweets? A uh, very occasional thing, not super often for me. It make my stummy hurt. You know, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna judge other YouTubers' music, it's probably only fair that I make you guys judge mine. I think I think it's fair to show you it and you guys can see where I'm at in like as far as this kind of creative endeavor goes. Feel free to be brutal. Uh it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Poot, you want yeah, me to show Poot in my deck? Cancel culture went too far back when they crucified Jesus. That was really messed up. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Bands on top of bands like I'm on Swiss saying cracker. I push a lot of peace cause I got a tiny bladder. I'm sipping something green that I spiked like a cactus. And I'm using this title scheme, you can have it after. I need my first kid, I want them to be a bastard. Why would I have to sex when all my music, tweets man. already bangers? Contracts are just like my Twitch chatters. I don't know what yeah, they're saying. Goes hard, man. Love me some I've been getting more top than the Mad Hatter. Stupid shit come out my mouth. I think ass backwards. The world's more fucked in a way I say Nevada. The government's being getting run worse than Java. I'm trying to get held by someone with a bigger stature. If you use Pinterest, your opinion doesn't matter. My stench like a Legos on the ground make them scatter. I mean, everyone I've loved does. I think I see a pattern. Ouch. I'm a young hoodie chilling on a coat hanger. When we fucking know I'm getting used like a scabbard. Lights on my computer to look like Crystal Cavern. With, with the period interior. Good job, bro, rubbish. Bad. I love that Crystal one. Crystal with a horse Classic. cock. Collar ain't on car. Huh? Foreskin sawed off. Suck it till my jaws locked. This tip in the back of my head like a top. Very, 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 very
always someone new who gets me called a knockoff Twitter's really bad for me, I should probably log off I'm always saying spit take shit, you gotta pause on There's ants crawling in your skin, you should really claw it off Ooh, Nice and healthy looking like the bile lizard Drinking too much, making fat out of my liver I know you hate my vids and I wouldn't make them better But I'm busy trying to fucking alternate, let me get start relevant Gotta clean my cum out of sink like blinkers Whole lot of plants to ink out like a printer I look weird as hell every time I'm taking pictures Yeah, that's like the best track I think I've made up till now. Um, personally, I know a lot of people like the backrooms more, but you know how you know how you how you are with any creative endeavor. The most recent thing you've put all your time into is the one you like the most. Nice aesthetic, thanks. Been trying to dig into that internet core web core shit pretty heavy. Remember the first time I watched you on stream? I'm pretty sure Eric either shared your channel link or rated you. I'm pretty sure he rated me. And you learned about the dark side of Cat Jam. <laughs> I heard someone call your music nerdcore. I could see that, but I feel like webcore is probably a bit more accurate because aesthetically the kind of beats that I go for are pretty trap oriented, but uh, they still center around like old internet aesthetics. Nerdcore is like the my life is a video game shit. And uh, I really don't want to be that. <laughs> Incel Core? Incel Core is very different from this, man. Promise. Promise. Your ex introduced me to you, and I'm glad you stuck- you're glad you stuck around? Fuck, dude. Um, I'm really sorry about that. I'm glad it being your, uh... <laughs> I'm glad that being introduced by your ex didn't ruin my videos for you. Glad to have you, man. Incel Core is Wilbur Soot music? No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. I, Incel Core is a lot more fucking visceral than you're aware of. It's not YouTuber music, bro. I promise you. Um, Eret Raid was scary for the mods. I'm glad they're all well behaved. Well, yeah, it's Eret like does is like really diligent about the kind of fan base he um, cultivates. My main worry, like when he rated us, would be that no one would stick around because of how fucking AIDS we are. Um, I don't know. I, I wasn't super worried. Er Eret keeps like a pretty good handle on how his community functions. He's he's been good about that, I think. You paid more attention to my videos than him? Oh. Dude, I, 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 can't, I can't say details, but that's not the first relationship I've come in the middle of. <laughs> because of my content. <laughs> the, the shit some people have said in my chat is fucking ridiculous. Have you played Splitgate? Uh, yeah, I liked it, and then Halo came out, and I had no reason to play it anymore. How'd you get the mechanical legs for the music video? I've always had them. It's just, like, application when you go outside so you don't make people uncomfortable, you know? I'm considerate of the people around me. Contrary to popular belief. Am I a part of the LGBTQ community? Um, does the B stand for badass? Because if so, then yes. <laughs> uh, that wasn't very funny. Sorry. <laughs> Fucking hell. Why would you fuck hell? That seems like it would burn your penis. Please tell me how you got the PNG tuber. Okay, I, I gotta I gotta make a very clear distinction for you guys. A PNG tuber are still images. A VTuber is a rigged model that uses face tracking and like to show live 
uh, response and emotion on a face. A PNG tuber are usually like, back in my day, we used to call them character stills, where you would commission an artist for a bunch of preset emotions and have them represent a certain mood you were saying when you were speaking. But there, there's a pretty distinct difference. Like VTubers have like a really fleshed out community and have been around well before um, PNG tuber was a term. Uh, and I don't know. It seems like PNG tubers are mostly a YouTube shorts thing these days. So like Saber Spark, yeah, like the, like we we had the equivalent of PNG tubers. It was the exact same thing when I start like when I first joined the commentary community. But folks called them character stills. And they were used by a pretty different group of people. Wasn't the PNG tuber the thing you used to promote stuff now? No, that's uh, just like a scratch drawing my friend made that I think is really funny to this day, so I use it. And that's not really a PNG tuber thing, because it's literally just that one image. I guess if you consider the fact that a lot of people will just zoom in onto their PNG image as the expression, then yeah, that, then I use it like a PNG tuber. Ooh. Thoughts of the one PNG YouTuber Jellybean? I don't know the name. I mean, I don't watch their videos, but everything I've seen about them, they seem like a fine enough person. Like, I, I don't know. It's like I've I've said this before: the treatment they've gotten on the internet, um, and how it's evolved into what it did is just like really kind of. It sucks. <laughs> like, it, it's just shitty. Are you free? I don't know. Are you in a debt trap? Do you have student loans to pay off? Because if so, then you might not. You might not be free. What would you do if the Doom Slayer was real and approached you? Get an autograph. I think. <laughs> Chat's full of jokesters tonight, huh? Yeah, you guys think you're so funny. So comedically inclined, huh? So, funky and funny. Never played Spooky's Jump Scare Mansion? Can't say I have. What would you tell Joe Biden right now if you met him? Uh, hi is probably how I'd lean in like I'd be like you're Joe Biden or something something crazy like that I, I don't know I'm pretty bold and daring when I when I meet people like that every time you read one of my messages I get like jump scared I hope you shit yourself that time what is the new music video I dropped the last one like less than two weeks ago y'all have no patience <laughs> Ugh. Well, two weeks. It would have been two weeks as of today. Y'all may y'all want me to make another fucking production in the space of of that time? I don't even have the next song done. God, this is what I get for having consistent output. They're zoomers, of course they don't. The, the thing is, like I I've been releasing singles at a rate that a lot of musicians don't as a dedicated career thing. And I'm doing this on top of like streaming and two other channels. And I'm get, I, I think my quality control process is definitely a lot smaller than what they have going on. So like, yeah, that's fair. But I'm, try, I'm trying to get like a catalog as fast out as I can without making it dog shit. You know what I'm saying? Because I would love to have a body of work to like that you can be introduced to and not just the three singles.
But you know, I'm just starting, so probably not a good idea to rush it. Your VTuber looks bald? That would be because I'm bald. You're putting out music and videos, shit's insane. It, it's like, it, my, my current schedule is like this. So I want to say the one song a month thing is just how it turned out from these last three months. That's not a thing I'm committing to at all. That's just how it panned out with my burst of inspiration and my scheduling. I'm not making any promises of that being a consistent release thing. But right now, I'm working on music pretty much when I can or when I'm like feeling it. I do two videos on the main channel, two videos on the second channel a week. Stream three times a week at least, so usually more. Um, or not usually more, but sometimes more. And then I have like a third channel I run, like that I'm hands, I just manage it, but. And then also occasionally the fucking quite with the Y channel. It, of course we don't expect that little shit was just and say how much you pumped out. I mean, when you're feeling it, it's, it, it, when you're in, when you're in the go mode, it's easier, you know? When I write music, it's usually because I'm feeling like writing music, which is nice to have. Remember the microwave cat? I wish I didn't. Dear math, grow up and solve your own problems. Realest shit I've ever heard. You're going to a paintball party. Have any advice? Do you think I've ever been outside? No, I've got nothing for you, man. Wait, if you had a choice to destroy the earth, would you do it or just kill the dumb Gen Zs? Listen, man, I really appreciate you being in my stream and like taking the time out of your day to be in my chat. But that is like one of the dumbest fucking questions I've ever heard. Like, I don't even like what kind of choice is this? <laughs> I know that's mean, but you deserve it. <laughs> oh, my fucking God, dude. Oh. Oh, I need a cigarette. Sorry, I, I shouldn't have been so harsh. That was rude. That wasn't kind of me. What is Microwave Cat? Oh, man. Anybody who's from WeStream or, like, hasn't seen the video, here's a, here's a funny little introduction. I did a chat confession stream, as a lot of people have, um, and the worst one in the inaugural stream was that Somebody admitted to taking their brother's cat, putting it in the microwave to see what would happen, and they watched it pop. Um, and they said that they buried it in the backyard, cleaned out the microwave, and told their brother that it ran away and it never came back. Um, I actually have a bar about that in one of my songs, because it stuck with me so much. Oh god, I remember that. I'll never forget it, man. I'll just have random- I'll have- I'll, like- be two generations down, I'll have kids, then they'll have kids, and I'll be super proud of them for, like, growing up into whoever they happen to be. And then I'll be holding my grandchild, tearing up, and then I'll suddenly remember the microwave cat, and it'll kill the moment for me. We should listen to Pood in my bed. I don't know what it is, but before I was dropping music that went on Spotify, I had these, like, little shit posty ones I'd upload to the same, to the now music channel. And one of them was pooed in my bed, and I made that in literally 10 minutes. And for some reason, my mods have attached themselves to that like a flea to a dog. They are so enthusiastic about it. And I mean, good for them if they get genuine enjoyment out of it. I mean, more power to them, but I, I don't get it. I don't get it. We love pooed in my bed? Yeah, I know. I'm very aware that you like that song. <laughs> you have never let me forget how much you like that song. <laughs> Ugh. Pood in my bed is a banger, man. I feel so bad for the guy who made that beat, because it was a beat that was made unironically, and I checked the newest comments, and it was just Pood in my bed over and over again, and he hearted one of them. <laughs> He's like, yeah, Pood in my bed, what a banger. I think if you look up Poot in my bed, I am the first result. Poot 
pooed in my bed anything else? You know, I put a lot of work into those other into those anything else's. So that's kind of like shitting in my mouth, you know that? I heard it? Yeah, I was going to the instrumental to see if there's anything new said. Favorite show right now? I don't watch a lot of shows. Virgin Express solos, and I firmly believe that. See, I'll take that one, because I think the beat, as stupid as it is, kind of goes in its a really unique way. And the flow in it's decent. The bars are dog shit, because I wrote those... I, like, I literally picked the first word I thought of that rhymed. Did not care what the setup was, just used it to make the setup, like, to make the line work. And it, I was like, boom, done. Um, but I can at least understand why you might enjoy that song. Might. Might. Like, here, for, for reference of how dog shit this is. Donation. This is Virgin Express, Don the worst Donation. beat ever freestyle. Donation. Do Donation. Donation. Gotta stand your feet like shoelaces. I'm real faded. My heart's gone cold. Yeah, it's vacant. I've been plenty places. Set maybe vacation. My songs ask. They still in your rotation. I ain't never seen you inside of someone's vagina. Just because I'm famous, do not mean the bitches line up. I better not see any comments calling us fire. Only thing that blazes your pants, cause you a liar. I'm more bright out than a Mustang's tires. I only get in clubs where no cloud is required. As shit as this beat is, whoever made it, I admire. When I need to shower, I hop inside of the dryer. My cat's real cute. Her name is Smoke. Did I ever mention that I really love to smoke? I think I'm really cool, cause I puff on that soap. I think if I was British, I'd call all my friends blokes. I don't sip liquor because it hurts my throat. I'm too Christian, stick to root beer float. You sound much younger though, I don't know how. I was doing a voice. I was doing this voice when I rapped, you know? That, that was part of the gag. Just call me for a beer, bitch, who there goes? Five, five, even sitting down on my toes. Like cocaine, all of my shit blows. My hours on Dune came in in droves. You never listen to real music and it shows. I bet you never even heard any Billy Joe. He's underground, he's someone you wouldn't know. I'm a fucking Luddite, I don't even have a phone. I am very sensitive, please watch your tone. I'm fly as fuck with guns attached like a drone. Wait, made this? Really? Yes, really. It, really. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, you're lighter than a man. sounded so cute. That's your takeaway? I mean, I guess. I guess. I'm bleeding on my ass sure. like somebody with Crohn's. I'm beating on my dick like I was Don Jones. Drop him to the floor after, yeah, I'm going prone. I'll drop five subs for Poot in my bed. Deal. I'll play Poot in my bed while I pee. I was originally going to play an ad break, but five subs is worth more than I'd ever fucking get from it, from an ad break, so. All yours, <laughs> Anthony. I pooed in my bed, 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 voices in my head, why my poo red, but you know what I said, yeah I pooed in my bed, yeah I pooed in my bed, better poop in the dead, nothing like a good poo to take off the edge, if you ferment your shit then your poo can turn into bread, constipation put my motivation in a red, but I'm still coming through like the poo out my ass cheeks. Did that shit like three times alone in the past week. If you have any questions about wiping technique, don't feel like I'm too unapproachable to come ask me. There are no dumb questions, better off safe than sorry. You'd rather be prepared than shoot your pants at a party. You should never take a chance if you think you're just farting. From the toilet's point of view, my ass looks like a marquee. If you don't have toilet paper, it's okay to use leaves. Just be very careful not to use any poison ivy. If not, use your bed sheets to wipe will do nicely. My diarrhea dripping from my butt like an ivy. I pooed in my bed. 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 Voices in my head. Why my poo red? But you Yo, know holy what shit. I said. Yeah, I pooed in my bed. All five of you bed. fucking gifted five subs? Jesus, thank you so much. I, I thought I was going to do it for just Avi, but thank you guys. I appreciate that. <laughs> that, was, that was actually very nice of you. Thank you guys. I appreciate that. We love this fucking song, man. I don't want to abuse your, like, the, the, the sub button, but, you know, if, if that's how you're going to treat me when I play it, you certainly know how to make it, you know, certainly know how to incentivize a guy. How old am I? 22. That was so funny to me. Well, that, yeah, I would hope it'd make you laugh. It's just, 
enjoying it as a like an ironic song is very shocking to me. All right, I'm gonna play some Doom. I've decided. Nothing's really going to change from the just chatting segments. There's just going to be a game in the background now. That's really the only difference. So how many subs for a Doom stream? You said that after I was going to decided to play it. God damn it! I'm not going to milk you guys that hard. Don't worry. I just wanted to play Doom anyways. I might not play at 100% capacity, though. I've gotten a lot worse at this game, man. I had a really big hiatus period, and the, my movement instincts have shifted more towards arena shooters like Halo than they have a game like this, so I'm really reorienting playing it. But a game that I'm looking forward to, Turbo Overkill, comes out in a few weeks, and I really want to play it. I'll, uh, I, know, I know you can't see it on stream right now. I'm still fucking booting it up. Shield Doom Time. Yep. You'd think those would be antonyms, but they really work. Good night, Toppy Games. Have a good one. Let me uh, fuck with my audio settings. Wait. Actually, I'm going to keep music off. It's easier for me to chill when it's off. All right, see you, Gus. We have a good one. The DLC is also beat. I beat it uh, a while ago, but I'm like stuck on this nightmare run I'm trying to do. Please don't let me die here, it's way too damn early. There we go. From chillin' to gaming? I'm still chillin', what are you talking about? You need to get better with rapid gun switching? Yeah, it definitely took me a while to get my muscle memory and it's still not perfect. Like, this, that number, like, fucking took me ages to get right. And I still can't do it very well while moving. Movement speed is insane. Could be better, but thank you. Never seen you play Doom before. It's so cool that you're playing it. Yeah, I love this game. What runes do I use? Uh, let me check. I use Glory Kill from further away. It, th this one's pretty much uh, uh, like uh, like essential. Like you need to have the increased movement control and uh, Shockwaves to drop health. Um, I don't really care about the speed boost. Um, the Glory Kill's faster thing never really seemed like it had much benefit to me. Um, Stagger State might be something to experiment with, honestly. Um, I only had this because the when they had the blood punch glitch, so I should probably switch that out now that I think about it. Survive, giving you a chance to recover. Um, I should definitely put this one on actually. That one is super useful. Ultra Nightmare stream, dude. I cannot beat Ultra Nightmare. I've tried to get past the first level. I fucking suck at it. favorite enemy right now uh 
I don't know, I've always been partial to the Hell Knight design. Like, he is just, like, a big-ass dude, but... I don't know, I like big-ass dudes. Wait, were you a good child? I have no idea. Doom is unnervingly chill with that music. Yeah, especially because we're on an ice level, am I right? Sorry, that was corny. Fuck! I already lost that life. I can't play Doom without the music, I'll go crazy. I play it while I listen to podcasts a lot, so that's just kind of why I turn mine off. Like, I still need the sound cues for enemy stuff, but, like, the music just kind of distracts from conversations when I'm listening to one. I like big-ass dudes. I know what I said. That's not what I wanted. Despite the Hell's Knight's design not really resembling the original, they did really good on the redesign. I think um, I prefer the kind of closer to realism aesthetic that Doom 2016 had. I don't know, I just liked how gory it was, it was willing to get. But I also understand if they changed it for like gra graphical optimization and so that the gore system would work a little better. Like, it, it's just kind of whatever, you know? Where was I supposed to go again? I forgot. I always forget at this pit. It's kind of embarrassing. I forgot. That's all my quick scoping practice on Call of Duty becoming useful. Seeing you use the chainsaw so freely makes me hurt because I use it sparingly. Well, I fucking bleed ammo like a motherfucker, and you have an automatically recharging chainsaw. You better use it every time you get a chance. mean the original design from 1995 i don't even i didn't really play the original doom so i'm not sure a bit about the comparison the hell night we know now started in doom 3 yeah that's fair i, I i'd have to look at the old design to know the full context you need to beat the first game first i would recommend playing 2016 before eternal because 2016 is a great game but a the things you learn in that doom eternal builds off of and if you get good at Doom Eternal first, it's really hard to go back to the old one. Like, I have fucking way more hours on Eternal than I ever did on um, 2016, and I liked 16 when I played it. like demonic go things. Yeah, that is very different from what we got now. Oh, that that's not I didn't mean to press that. I got to use that plasma rifle more. It's really fucking useful. Where are you, big guy? Dude, my ass cheeks clench when I play this game if, I, if I'm like too logged in. 
If I'm too tapped in, like, I, I, my whole body tenses up like I'm doing some physical exertion. What's the plot of Doom? All I know is you shoot bad guys. There's, like, some pretty deep Doom Slayer lore, but it is mostly just shooting demons. This is very much a game about a game, the gameplay, more than anything. I personally like the lore, but it's very hit or miss, depending on who you are. favorite doom tuber i think i watch mayo the most and he doesn't just make doom content so it depends but uh, i watched him for a while i don't know i'm not a, i'm not super into doom tube these days though Damn it, I keep pressing the wrong ass button. There we go. Okay, come on, big guy. There we go. This is on Mars? No, this is on Earth. The Doom Eternal has, like, way more varied level locations than a Doom 2016 had. Will or have you ever gotten into speedrunning? I think it's fun to watch sometimes, but doing it myself is just really not my thing. There we go. Oh, it's the apocalypse? Duh. Yeah. Oh wait, wrong spot. Favorite song? Uh, impossible to choose. Like, that's literally an unanswerable question. Would you get in trouble if you Bluetooth pooed in your ped to your sister's elementary school speakers? Yes, in fact, I would highly encourage you not to do that. I can't stop you, but I will condemn you, and I do not approve of those actions if you were to take them. I have it on record that I, condo I do not condone those, that kind of behavior. Fuck, I should have gotten the health off of them. So I have to do. Have you read the newest BNHA chapter? It's not out yet, is it? 350 is not coming out until Sunday, I don't think. It's not on. It's not on Shonen, at least. I don't really. I don't look at leaks, so I, I, if it's there, I don't. Shit! 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 I'm getting shit on. As it were. Yeah, just leaks. I, I don't. I don't like looking at leaks. I, I want to just experience it as it comes out. I know it was teased to be about Dobby in like 3:49, but I don't want to spoil it for a anybody who hasn't seen it or is a manga or an anime watcher exclusively, or just hasn't cut off on the manga up till now. See you, zombie killer. What's up, Heavenly Father? Have, hope you're having a good one. Yeah, I, li I like to think I'm pretty good at Doom. I like to think I'm not dog shit, you know? This is probably one of your first times enjoying a Doom stream. Well, I'm glad I, I could be the person to make it not dog shit. Oops. He is a bigger demon than I thought he was. So you're using the precision bolt instead of the ballista? Never thought of that. I use the precision bolt, like this combo of fuck ton. Like, uh, and then I use this for like, I use precision bolt ballista for like 
targeting weak points one after another. It just kind of depends on the combo I'm trying to go for. How can you not enjoy a Doom stream? I mean, it just depends on the stream, don't it? Plus, I'm pretty sure the, the Precision Bolt takes less ammo if what you're trying to do is hit weak points. Um, and has, like, less kickback. I don't know, there's just, like, there's a few factors. You play Minecraft Story Mode 2? Season 2? Um, depending on how this next video does, I want to say probably. Are you fucking kidding me? I, I, are you fucking kidding me? That is so AIDS. Okay. Gaming. Good night, baked beans. Have a good one. Does Bethesda things? Yeah. There's like a lot of combo work I need to work in. Like I need to get better at like this little attachment with the plasma rifle and um, fire, like flamethrower usage. Plus my movement has been really fucking whack as of late. You're insane. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. I just like the people I watch play. Like they're even crazier. So you know, you know there's always there's always another fish, I suppose. This bit, I just fucking hate trying to beat, so I just wait for all these fuckers to spawn and then let this bitch out. I just cannot be asked. There's a combo with the plasma beam. So, I'll, I'll, next time I see uh, an enemy, I'll try and like show you what I'm talking about. You can play the first five episodes on Netflix, but to play anything beyond that, you have to get like some third-party code and it's AIDS. I only did it because it's literally the only way to get the game. I tried, prefer not to buy games like how you had to buy it there. So with the, the plasma rifle, like the plasma beam, the funny meme here is that with it, you don't use much of the actual ammo. It's just when you're trying to set up a combo, it's a it's like it's like a quick stagger. And then that lets you like set up whatever you want. That's like something I don't take enough advantage of. Like, see how useful that is? Like, fucking Christ, it stops a pinky right in his tracks. Favorite book right now? Um, I don't know, fucking Guardians of Gahul. Read that shit in second grade and it's still the best piece of fiction ever created. That might help you with the specific mob on the specific level. Yeah, it's like super, like situationally helpful. I think that was everybody. This is crazy, you would never be able to do this. Hey, Insomni, you gotta understand, I, I started playing Doom on the easiest difficulty. Like, I'm sure you could with enough time. It's just most people don't waste enough of their lives to <laughs> learn the fucking combos that I did for no reason other than, I think, the game fun. What am I missing here? Oh, wait, right, you gotta kill these guys. I'm sure you could get to this level, though. Like, um, like I, I think most people are capable of it with, like, enough hours in. He's switching guns like Skullgirls combos. I mean, you have to at, like, certain difficulties. That on top of the movement. You mean the quick movements and such? I Listen, I didn't used to be able to do it either. I, I, I genuinely think with, like, the right, like, practicing the right things, consuming the right content, like, you, 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 anybody could do it. Like, it's, it's just a matter of application. And there's no reason to apply yourself if you're just not, if you don't care to that much. Like, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just, I got really fucking fixated on this game for a while. Have I ever played Ghost of Tsushima? Um, no, but I want to. Wait, what the fuck was I doing? I, I'm brain dead.
Glad you could be here, Sleepy Indy. Doom slaying is an art. Realest thing I've ever heard. There's so much creative expression in how you can play this game because there's so many different options you can take combo-wise. Like, I have very baked-in preset combos that I use for damage dealing. It's just kind of how I operate, but... You suck at Doom, but it's such a satisfying game. Yeah, right? Like, I definitely am not playing at the top most level. Like, I can't beat the hardest difficulty on this game. But it still feels really good to, like, hit those combos when you do. Am I a big fan of difficult games? Depends on the kind of difficulty. Like, I haven't really been able to get into Dark Souls, but Bloodborne was more my speed. Um, I kind of want to try Elden Ring. I don't know what it is about Doom specifically, but I just find getting good at it to be very rewarding in a way that I haven't felt with a whole lot of other games. What's up, the Wise Doge? Hope you're doing good. Did you want the blue orb? Well, it's too damn late now, ain't it? This fun, this section's always a little bit of fun. Any advice for new streamers? Um, put your content in other places, because you, you will not grow by just streaming. You have to make YouTube videos, TikToks, or just something to, like, attract people to your Twitch, stuff like that. Somehow this guy's rockets are more powerful than, like, fucking Doom Slayer combos. It's great. Also, he has infinite health. Not infinite health, but practically infinite. Conveniently, you know? Lasered. Have I tried the multiplayer? I, I can't say I have. I don't know. It was never really my priority, and I haven't found a lot of people, like, friends that I could play it with. Online matchmaking is never... is not... Like, I wasn't really motivated enough to play the online matchmaking version. Imagine being able to glory kill as a ribbon, right? Is it gone? What do I do? Guys, the shotgun isn't there. You know what? I'm gonna just let the homie chill. He, w he was nice to me. I'm not gonna kill him. Okay, this room is fucking AIDS. Where's that fucking fleshy guy I can kill? Relax, I'm kind of busy gaming here. That, fuck off, dog. Seriously. Literally piss off. Do I prefer FPSs or RPGs? FPS is big time. I don't know. I just played them way more. There are certain FPGs I adore, but I, I just play way less of them. The thing is, when I do get into an RPG, it becomes like a massive time sink for me. Like, I get really into them, you know? Like, Swator, I was super fucking big into. I have several hundred hours onto that.
but um, in Skyrim, like I've played that through fucking rid a ridiculous amount of times. But I, I have a hundred hours a piece on a bunch more FPSs, and I play a wider range of them. So to get into an RPG for me, it's like it's got it's very situational, very specific. When you play Doom, you only use sticky bombs. It's your favorite weapon. I barely use the combat shotgun these days, and I probably should. Like, it has good applications that I just don't touch. bombs are the only use for the shotgun you can't change my mind full auto has some application especially in that new the most recent dlc but i would i really only use the sticky bombs on it but there's definitely stuff you can do with it outside of the sticky bombs as someone who plays this game on xbox i can't switch weapons this fast this is very cool to watch glad you're enjoying it but i think i think um i think there might have been a patch that like lets you alter control so that you can weapon swap. Either that or if you have a controller with an Xbox controller with paddles, I think there's a way. I, I have no idea what it is. I just heard some folks talking about it in a video once. The thing is, like playing Doom, I don't think it needs to entirely be about what's practical. Like if you can make full auto combos work and they're fun, you should by all means do that. Because it, 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 you know, in Devil May Cry, it's not always about doing what is necessarily the most efficient to kill something. It's also about style. And I don't see why you couldn't treat Doom the same way. Like, I try to make my combos look clean, you know? The MC5 is sick? Yeah, I'm a big fan. Have I played Stardew Valley? Have not. Come on, where the fuck is it? one of these fleshy fucks when I need them? Christ. Fleshy fuck. Yeah, I need. I was looking for something softer, you know? downloaded Warzone and took all your storage? I can see that. It seems like they do that on purpose so that you can only play Warzone. Ever played a text adventure before? When I was younger, I probably played a few, but I haven't really sought them out since then. I'll be playing Friday Night Funkin' next week. I don't know about next week, but when the new content update drops at the end of this month, I will definitely be playing that. Whenever there's, like, official Friday Night Funkin' content, you know, you gotta fucking get on that it's ASAP. Fuck, my aim, dog. Not the best right now. Fuck! I almost had that glory kill too. I was right next to it. I was really hoping I wouldn't have to lose a life there. Love the gore. Gore is the best part. Praise the gore. Yeah, fair. Jesus. 
I was hoping I wouldn't lose any more lives, but you can't always be, you can't all be winners. Know anything about Geometry Dash? Just the memes I see on TikTok, really. Thanks for the sub, Autumn Monkey, appreciate it. Eternal. I think I got it on launch day. Like, I remember I was super hyped for it because I really liked 2016 when I eventually got around to playing it. so fun. Thanks for streaming. Yeah, of course. This is a longer one than usual. I was just kind of in the mood when I booted up and was like, hmm, today I think I will stream for a disproportionate amount of time. Did I have a 3DS as a kid? Ooh, dude, you can actually, this is a fun fact. You can see the 3DS I've had since I was 11 on my shelf in pretty much all of my videos since 2020. If you go to the one today, you'll probably see it on the shelf there. It's the OG blue model. Is it next to the G Fuel? Yes. I can show, I can pull it up after this. Real quick. You had the DSi XL instead of a 3DS? I had a DSi XL and then I got the 3DS when that got announced because I was a spoiled brat. You still have your old DSi with the flip notes? Dude, I love going back to those sometimes. It's just so nostalgic every time I look at it. Okay, final arena I believe. I had a DS Lite, a DSi XL, and a the 3DS. So yeah, a good, a, a decent, a decent selection of DSs. And then also, not to mention the Game Boys. I don't know. I was a Nintendo kid for the very for a very long time. Took out that tyrant like a Chad. I do my best. Okay, the arch file should be spawning soon, so I need to find him. There you are, motherfucker. I saved these specifically for him. Because I just do not want to deal with him spawning shit. Beginning of the stream, we were dating a demon, now we're killing a demon? Yeah, we went from opposite ends of the sin spectrum. From, like, hella lust to hella murder. Neat! Ugh! crack like 40 different joints in my body. Thought I would have a good neck one in there too. Oh. Oh. All right, that's like we're coming up on hour 4, guys. I think I'm going to call it here. Uh thank you guys for coming out to the stream. I had a good time. It was a very uh 
fun one, a bit of a longer one, which is you know usually a good sign because if I go for longer, it means I'm having a decent time being live. I'll see y'all on Monday. In the meantime, I'm going to run a quick ad break. Find someone to raid. Stick around. Who's live? Who's playing Doom, actually? Who's playing Doom right now? Eh, let's just throw it Axel's way. Oxel's way. That's the homie. He's doing a late night chill stream on GeoGuessr. I should play GeoGuessr again sometime. That'd be like a nice chill game. It's like super relaxed when you're just like with chat. Good God. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to send you guys Oxel's way. Be sure to say hi, stick around, and um, if I'm not back sooner, I should be back on Monday. That'll be fun. I expect to see every single one of you in the stream. If not, I'll cry and shit and piss and throw a hissy fit and uh, just generally make your life a living hell for the next however long I've got you. So yeah, you should definitely be in here, otherwise you're kind of cringe. And I know you wouldn't want that. I know, I, I know you, the last thing you guys would ought to be is cringe. All right, I'll, I'll see you guys soon. It's ironic, I promise. Okay. We're on good terms.